college football presented by Dr. Pepper. A blackout at Carter-Finley Stadium where NC State looks to lift the black cloud from last week's loss at West Virginia. It's the Wolfpack against Ball State from the Mid-American Conference. And Ishraf alongside former Texas DB Ahmad Brooks. When we spoke to Dave Doran yesterday, he talked about all the things that could have gone right a week ago. Some of them were on defense, but offensively, this is a team that a year ago had sure things, constant 2,000-yard yeah. receivers, 1,000-yard running back, an NFL quarterback, and oh, by the way, the best offensive lineman that plays center in the country. Those constants are gone. Now you have variables. Where are the constants in 2019? They are missing their offensive identity. Dave Doran wants his team to be balanced with both the running, the pass, and you, you get you go to your opening ball game where you lose your best big play target in C.J. Riley. Now I think you're left with two guys that I think could occupy this role. On the on the left there, you have the freshman running back Zonovan Knight. This young man is continuing to pick up steam. Has led this team in rushing each and every ball game. Great vision and the ability to take it the distance. On the opposite side, Emeka Amezi. This is a wide receiver, 6'3", great size, big hands, runs decent routes. He's going to be the target today that I think becomes the favorite target of the quarterback. That being said, these two guys are legit. Uh, Mezzi has more than twice as many catches as any other Wolfpack player. Meanwhile, Drew Blitt gives Ball State a chance at an upset. Well, I tell you what, this guy is special. When you watch him on film, I don't care what school he plays for, he's legit. Sees the field well, finds the open target, and beats the defense with his brain and his ability. Well, we welcome those of you watching us on ESPNU and Ishraf Ahmad Brooks, Chris Budden down on the sidelines. The Wolfpack of NC State out of the ACC against Ball State out of the Mid-American Conference. NC State coming off its first loss of the season. That was at West Virginia. It's a young Wolfpack team. Dave Doran now in his seventh season knows there was going to be some reshuffling and retooling here in 2019. Meanwhile, Ball State, one of the most experienced teams in the country. They're off to a one and two start. Play Indiana tough in the opener. They have a win against FCS Fordham and gave one away last week because of four turnovers against FAU. NC State won the toss. They defer. Ball State will receive. The Wolfpack. In their all-black uniforms, part of this blackout at Carter-Finley Stadium. And Ball State counters in the whites. Malik Dunner back deep to receive for Ball State. Trenton Gill to kick it off for NC State. Cardinals will start at the 25. We say hello to Chris Budden. Well, Drew Plant had proved a lot over the offseason that he could be the next starting quarterback for Ball State. You know, they say that he just kind of assumed the role over the offseason. But when I talked to Plant, he told me it wasn't that I knew the job was mine. There were aspects that I thought I had to prove, and that included the stuff off the field. So during the offseason, if you, you know, can't prove it during spring drills, what do you do? You prove it off the field. You organize workouts. You become the voice inside the weight room. And he made the job very easy for Mike New to decide who would be the next starting quarterback for Ball State. Clint taking over for Riley Neal, who left as a graduate transfer to Vanderbilt. And on first down, there's Riley Miller, the DB killer for a gain of 11. And a first down, Miller, terrific catch radius. You throw it in his area, he'll come down with it. It's great timing from Clint, first play of the ball game. And now going quickly, Ball State. Caleb Huntley out of the backfield, met immediately by Brock Miller. Negative yardage. And if Ball State can pick up a few first downs early, get into tempo, get to cruising altitude, makes a huge difference early on. They were behind the chains a lot a week ago. I think the key to the ball game is for them to control the place of pay. play. Play it again to the air. As a receiver, it's Antoine Davis. He's pushed out of bounds near the sticks, a gain of nine, and Mike New, the Ball State head coach, comfortable in these third and shorts. 
Yeah, he is. And, and this is their, their own schedule here, especially with Plitt at quarterback. That time picking on left cornerback Keyshawn Miller, who's making the start today. And this is where Plitt is a coach on the field. He's going to get his team into the best play for them to convert here. NC State brings pressure. Plitt gets rid of it, completes to Davis. First down and more into NC State territory. Drew Plitt came into this game third nationally in passing yards entering week four. Yeah, Keyshawn Miller is its a veteran player. Great story here, but they're going to go after him. They're going to see what he's made of. Again, tempo for Ball State. We get a penalty marker. Full start, offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty, first down. Penalty on the left tackle, Caleb Slavin. A big loss for Ball State. Andrew Painish, the starting center, out with a knee injury. He suffered it in practice. So Anthony Todd, at number 72, gets the start at center. He's never started at center in a game for Ball State. Plitt coming from under center. Finding Walter Fletcher, no gain on the play. It'll be second and long. Fletcher, a Division II transfer out of Edinburgh College in Pennsylvania, and he's become a pretty good receiver out of the backfield for this team. That was outstanding coverage there by cornerback Chris Ingram. And, you know, last week, NC State did not do a very good job of tackling, and, and that was the message this week. But tackling there in open space on a key first down is great momentum. Here's the toss, Fletcher. And he gets five and sets up a third down. Walter Fletcher emailed about 60 schools in the FBS and FCS, hoping to get a sniff as a D2 transfer. Only one offered, and that was Ball State. It had a lot to do with Justin Lustig, the former Ball State assistant, who was Fletcher's coach at Edinburgh. And Lustig, who's now with Syracuse, said Fletcher is a power five player. And this is where Plitt makes his money. Third and long situation, NC State with the propensity to blitz. Here comes the blitz. Plitt gets rid of it. He's got Justin Hall, slips a tackle, fighting forward. He'll be stopped near the 40. It'll bring up a fourth down. They're going to go for it here. And it this looks is, like the offense this, will go for it. This is the distance you go for it, and especially with their tempo. You see the defense struggling to get the call there. Now Plitt's on the ball. They're about to go. NC State had trouble getting lined up, and now we get a whistle. I think NC State called a timeout, so the tempo early on giving this Wolfpack defense some fits. Ball State on the move. ESPN College Football presented by Dr. Pepper. Fourth down, Ball State will go for it. Their head coach, Mike New, back in Raleigh for the first time since 2002 when he coached the now defunct Carolina Cobras of the Arena Football League. Walter Fletcher into the game at running back. Drew Plitt, the Ball State quarterback, a perfect six of six. Snap gets away. Fletcher dives on it. NC State football, and we told you before we went to break, a new starting center for Ball State today, Anthony Todd, because of the injury to Panish. This is costly. Not just because you don't make it on fourth down, but for the field position you give away. Plitt just was not expecting that ball there. Wherever the miscommunication was, was with the hand signals and the ability to know when the snap was supposed to come. Now, there wasn't a lot of crowd noise here, but that's something they've worked on all week. Hand signals, because the crowd may get loud. And we all know, when the opposing offense is on the field, the crowd is most loud. Matthew McKay, the quarterback for NC State. Screen pass on first down. And taking it to the 40-yard line, Emeka Amezi, the junior from Marvin Ridge High School in Waxhaw, North Carolina. And he has been old reliable for Matthew McKay. Look at the numbers this season for McKay. For Dave Doran, he likes the fact that McKay has not turned it over. Zero interceptions. McKay will keep it. And he picks up a first down for NC State inside the 35. And you may say, well, well how does that happen with great decisions like this? Here, the redshirt sophomore sees that the screen was covered outside. 
you've got grass, go take it. He picks up a first down. Excellent decision there from Matthew McKay. Empty look on first and ten. McKay. Finding his running back, Zonovan Knight. Bam! The true freshman for a gain of seven. Knight entered week four with the second most rushing yards of any true freshman. Only Texas A&M's Isaiah Spiller had more. That time showing his ability to catch the ball. He lined up at on the perimeter and was able to run around like a wide receiver. Keon Lassane. And he is taken to the ground at the 25 by Jacob White, middle linebacker for Ball State. Had 17 tackles, a career high last week. Yeah, White is for real. I mean, this guy flies around. He, he's going to find the football. Great angle there of tracking the ball down in space, forcing him to the sideline, and then finishing the play with a big tackle as you get a third down here. Lassane limping off the field. Ball State showing blitz. And we get a penalty. Full start offense, number 67. Five-yard penalty, third down. Right tackle, Justin Witt, most experienced O-lineman for NC State. It's a young offense, only one senior starter. Even the quarterback, McKay, a redshirt sophomore, but again, was backing up Ryan Finley last year. Not a ton of experience and a lot of guys in new roles and much bigger roles than they were in the past. On third down, there's the pressure. McKay completes Thayer Thomas for a first down inside the 20, a gain of a dozen. That is a beautiful route. One thing when you watch Thomas, this kid can get in and out of his cuts. Excellent route there, nice ball. Not only was it a great connection, but it was on the best defender, in my opinion, for Ball State, Bryce Cosby, the strong safety. The Wolfpack have scored on every red zone trip this year. Thomas going in motion, and a penalty marker flies in. Ball start, offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, first down. Second penalty on NC State. It's on Emmanuel McGirt, the left tackle. We will see plenty of Ekam Ikwanu at left tackle today as well, the true freshman. Hand off, Bam Knight. Not much there. James Jeanette on the stop at second and long. And yeah, this Ball State defense is one of the best in the country at defending against the run, and they do it by just being disciplined. You know, you're not going to see guys out of gaps, and then then they're going to finish the play. But that time they're just doing a nice job of reading the play behind the line of scrimmage, flowing to the football and making the tackle. The strength of Ball State is the front seven. McKay out of the backfield. It's Knight. He dropped it. Incomplete pass. And now third and long. That was a poorly thrown pass, but he saw that there was some pressure coming on the outside edge. Uh, Christian Albright um, really getting upfield, getting in that passing window, so he felt like he needed to throw it over the top of him. And now you've got a third and long situation. And, and in these types of situations, it's the prime opportunity um, for defensive coordinator for Ball State, David Elson, to bring the pressure. Amezi, the go-to receiver at the top of your screen. Check down, it's through the hands of Knight. A couple of drops by the freshman, and the kicking team will come on. They read the blitz right. They bring a five-man pressure. And you've got your running back here on the check down. Nice route here, he gets inside, he's open. And that's a play he's gotta make. He might pick up the first down there and potentially getting into the end zone. The first one I don't think was on him. That ball was just poorly thrown, but that time there, he's got to be accountable when he comes off to the sideline and say, hey, that's my fault. Christopher Dunn, who had made eight, 19 in a row prior to a miss last week. He's old reliable, and this field goal attempt is good from 39. Poor snap by Ball State on fourth down. Gives the Wolfpack great position. They capitalize with three. NC State on top early. ESPN College Football is presented by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. 
like a lot of NFL players do when they roll to camp in style. Uh, some of the NC State players thought it would be funny to show up to camp in style. You saw Joe Sculthorpe, one of the linemen, come in a helmet car. Dylan Aunt Reed, the tight end, in a scooter. Ahmad and I, we talked about riding in one of those motorbikes with a sidecar, but you decided to, to cop out at the last minute. If, if so, I'm driving that sucker. You're in the sidecar. Believe that. Why do I have to be in the sidecar? Because side that's car? just the way it's going to work, my friend. NC State will kick it off after a 39-yard field goal by Dunn. Ball State's first drive ended in plus territory. The Wolfpack had the Cardinals looking at a fourth down. Anthony Todd making his first career start at center for Ball State. Watch what happens here on the fourth down snap. Miscommunication between he and quarterback Drew Plitt. Chris, you heard Plitt talking to Todd on the sideline afterwards. Um, and said, hey, that's on me. Don't worry about it. Trying to get Todd to pick his head up, get a little bit more positive reaction. This offense believes if they play fast, they'll be able to thrash these guys. Tempo worked on that opening drive. Plitt incomplete. He was six of six, but we get a flag. Keyshawn Miller, the five foot nine junior college transfer. Pass interference, defense number 28. Automatic first down. Yeah, Miller was in prime position there. He just got he just got to the wide receiver. The contact before the ball gets in the vicinity is why this was called. I mean, that's beautiful coverage. You know, it's that little bump on the way up. But, you know, early on, he gave up in that first drive. He gave up two key throws, and they're going to test him. I mean, they're going to go at this guy making his first start on the season. Dave Doran calls Miller one of the hardest working players on the team. Davis with another catch, and they are picking on Keyshawn Miller. And... Ahmad, you were a 5'9 cornerback. We're going back 20 years. You can feel for this guy a little bit. Well, the thing is, is what you don't want to do if you're Miller, you don't want to get in your own head. You know, you, you've just got to make a play. Keep playing. And, and right now, you haven't given up points. I mean, he's got, I mean, that, that's, that's great technique there. You know, you just got to give some people credit. Now, what I will say is the more they start throwing at him, the less uh, confidence he has in his ability to make a stop. Caleb Huntley bulldozes his way to midfield. Huntley, the junior from Atlanta, was a 1,000-yard rusher two years ago as a freshman, hurt last year and had missed about half the season. He's a bull. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you watch him at 226. He's trying to run through you, not around you. And, I mean, you, you watch him on film. He shrugs off defensive linemen, linebackers, and, you know, pity the DB that's trying to stand in front of him when he's trying to get extra yardage. Play action. Plitt. Clean pocket downfield, and he overthrew Hall. If that's on target, that's a touchdown. This may be the worst ball I've seen him throw all year. <laughs> I mean, honestly, he's wide open. I mean, he gets over the top of coverage. Hall, who's been an outstanding target for them this season. Great job of getting inside, beating the coverage, and he's got three or four yards on the defensive back. And they just missed fire as uh, Moorhead was in coverage, and Hall nearly had a touchdown. Trips to the field on third and four. Hall in motion. Plitt, seven of eight, steps up. He'll scramble, throwing downfield. And that is a catch for a first down. Nolan Given just his fourth reception of the season. The tight end out of Berkeley, Michigan. Ooh, as they're back on the ball to get more plays. The pocket mobility, the movement, Keeps his eyes downfield, connects for the first. Taking another shot downfield, incomplete. Intended for Johannes Tyler. Six foot three, sophomore out of New Orleans. That's great coverage there by Ingram. He's right underneath in that hip pocket. As a defensive back, coach will tell you, and you know when they connect like that as a defensive back, you know they're going to take a shot at some point. And, and Plitt, a little upset, I'm sure, that he didn't connect on the first opportunity he had that time there. The coverage for the Wolfpack was outstanding. Fly sweep, Malik Dunner. He's got great speed, and Dunner, a converted running back who was moved to wide receiver this year for exactly the reason you just saw. They want more explosive plays from this offense. Yeah, and what they're trying to do is, is take off 
the edge from those defensive ends and, and those uh, outside interior linemen from, from coming up field. And, and that makes them hesitant when you know that jet sweep has a possibility of being called. Unbalanced line after a 15-yard gain. Huntley running off tackle. Huntley into the clear. And another first down for Ball State. Chris Ingram made the stop, a gain of 11. Now, I said earlier that this is a kid that goes downhill and will pound pound the, the, the peel, but that time they're showing some nice movement, great vision, getting outside, extending the play with speed, quickness, and drive. Injury timeout, and NC State player is down. Dave Doran, a week ago, saw a team that he said played slow and missed a lot of tackles and right now ball state forcing the issue with their speed and tempo Final days of summer here at carter finley stadium it's the acc on espn ball state on the move again and chris they are testing the stamina early on of this NC State defense. They are the defensive backs for NC State are exhausted. I also just saw Brock Miller run off the field when he got to the sidelines, knelt down, was hovering over, had trouble catching his breath. His tempo is really getting to them. On first down, Huntley on the cutback. Takes it to about the 10. Drake Thomas, the tackle. Ahmad, you play defensive back against this kind of tempo this early in the game to Chris's point. What does it do to a DB? Well, number one, most defensive backs aren't subbed in. Now, on the wide receiver side, you got fresh guys coming in because of the depth of this wide receiver court for Ball State. So you're taking on fresh guys, you're fatigued, and that's where mental errors and, and injuries occur. This is Hall on the fly sweep. Hall reaching. Is he in? Touchdown, Ball State. Yeah, this looks like a touchdown from our angle, but we'll check it out again. Now, keep in mind, Justin Hall coming into the game had 63 rushing yards, averaging 10 and a half. That looks like a touchdown. He's the second leading rusher on this team, the wide receiver. So this is a play that's in their package. They love to run it. And you see why they would go with his number there as Hall does a nice job of turning the corner. And in my opinion, that looked like a touchdown. And I would expect that to be confirmed. NC State had not allowed a touchdown at home in the previous 12 quarters take another look where's the ball before that knee comes down and that ball looks to clearly be Indeed. in before that knee comes down they are looking at it but that should likely stand after a further review the ruling on the field is confirmed touchdown balance there he even used his hand there to stay up and not put his elbow down the awareness there from hall Excellent there play there. Great call. I mean, that, that just really got the defense off. And early on, we've seen success here from this offense. The NC State has not stopped them. You know, it was a self-inflicted wound, a poor snap, because they were driving even on that, on the first series. Now they come back here and just march up and down the field. Ryan Rimler on for the point after. A perfect 12 of 12 on PATs. And Ball State coming on the road with a 7-3 lead on NC State. They opened the season in an NFL stadium, went to South Bend. It's an experienced team, unfazed by their surroundings. Manish Raf, Ahmad Brooks, Chris Budden, Ahmad, how many of those boxes has Ball State checked off already? Well, you look at it, the favorite, NC State, they've got depleted depth with all the injuries on the defensive and offensive side of the ball. The program changer for Ball State is Drew Plitt. We've seen him be sharp, overlooking an opponent. I don't know if it'll happen today, but it certainly looked like it did last week versus West Virginia. Contrasting styles. This pace of play is wearing down the secondary. And listen, they don't have depth there. And then last but not least, courageous coaching. Mike New comes out, right? He goes for it on fourth down. He was rolling the dice on his team. Right now, it's setting up as though those things will be checked off. Lashane picked it up in the end zone. He'll try to run it out. And he's taken down across the 20 at the 22-yard line. He just gets confused here. He's not quite sure what to do. 
you know, and, and you're, you're talking about a sophomore here, and uh, he's got to make sure that, you know, he could kneel there, but you saw he, he, he was hesitant. He wanted to make the decision to kneel where they'd have got the ball at the 25. He brings it out. Thankfully, he got it past the 20 for his sake. He never possessed it, so he could have just taken a kneel down. Indeed. And it would have been a touchback. Bam Knight runs into a roadblock. Not much there. Jacob White again leading the charge. Now, there was a lot of angst in these parts after NC State lost last week at West Virginia because the Mountaineers had struggled in the first two games. Barely got by James Madison, blown out, and couldn't move the ball against Missouri. Then they went wild against NC State. And while the Wolfpack are reloading and rebuilding this to a certain degree, so is West Virginia with a new head coach and a lot of new faces on offense as we get another flag. Offside defense number 13 was in the neutral zone, causing the offensive tackle to react. Five yard penalty. First down. They get Jordan Williams, who had a big game last week against FAU, a fumble recovery for a touchdown, a sack, a sack, and actually had two fumble recoveries to take one to the house. Speaking of that linebacker core for Ball State, they are deep. They've got a lot of playmakers on that side of the ball. But once again, Knight. And he's to the 31 yard line, a yard shy of the marker, third down. NC State on the season, 35% on third down, entering week four. And this is where if you're NC State, you've got to have the ability to put the ball on the ground and convert in these third and short situations. You're relying on your offensive line here to get a push, but these should be the ones that you're licking your chops for to convert. There's Knight straight ahead on the zone read. And a first down for NC State. And that's a great positive sign if you're NC State to be able to run the football. They ran the football well against West Virginia in the first half, particularly to the boundary. West Virginia made some adjustments, and, and I thought they also lost the battle up front in the trenches and really shut them down in the second half. Matthew McKay to throw. Over the middle, incomplete. He wanted to carry Angeline. Chris? Well, McKay heard the chatter from the fan base after that loss to West Virginia, so much so that he told me that he deleted his Twitter account on Monday. He said, I got to blocking so many people, I just needed to shut it down. Dave Doring told the whole team that would be a good idea before the beginning of the season. But it was actually also advice from last year's starting quarterback, Ryan Finley, told him to simplify his life. Step one, to simplify, delete Twitter. This is Knight on the cutback. Not much running room. It's third and long. And for McKay, Dave Doran told us he has to manage expectations. In 10 of the last 11 years, NC State has had a future pro at quarterback. Russell Wilson, Mike Glennon, Jacoby Brissett, Ryan Finley the last three years. And Doran said four starts into his career, Matthew McKay is not going to be Ryan Finley. He likes the fact that McKay has played mistake-free football, but he said, listen, there's guys behind him who are playing well, and McKay will have to keep playing well to keep his job. Over the middle, caught! Emeka Mezzi brings it down with one hand! Old Reliable comes through on third down. We opened the show talking about this young man, and since C.J. Riley's in injury, he's just come out and flat out beat one-on-one -on -one coverage. This time here, coming across the middle of the field, not intimidated at all by the traffic with an outstanding sports center top 10 catch. Wow. Knight. Good vision, good patience. Tripped up by Bryce Cosby after a gain of seven. You're, out. You're absolutely right there. And, and Knight, keep in mind that this guy is not even seeing, used to seeing 
uh, the ball at that depth in terms of running. He comes from in high school, they ran the option. So, so I mean, you know, this is all new for him, and, and he's going to be a talented uh, young man down the road. Feeding Knight again. And it looks like he's got a first down for NC State. And now flags at the end of the play. A little brouhaha near that NC State sideline. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness defense, number one. 15 yard penalty, first down. It's Ray Wilborn, the starting free safety, a converted linebacker. And there's just no place for it. Now, it, it is it is a challenge. You, you see him there. It is a challenge. And I, I, that could have been a push there at the end of that play from Justin Witt. However, You've got to be careful, and especially when you're on the opposing team sideline, that's when it's always dangerous. On the fly sweep, Lassane trying to change directions, no gain. The tracking ability of this defense and the tackling ability. I mean, they just, they combine those two and partner those two well together, and, and the first time we're calling Bryce Cosby's name for making a play, but I can tell you, that front seven is outstanding. They get to the football, they take the appropriate angles, and they make it tough for teams to run the football. Coaches raved about Cosby, a coach on the field. And off. Person split wide. McKay has a running lane. And he's taken down. Looked like he may have tripped the turf monster. And it sets up another third and long. So NC State in danger of squandering another red zone opportunity. They had to settle for a field goal last time. Yeah, and that turf monster was Brock Burns, number 44 for Ball State, who re reached out right at the end of that play and tripped them up. And I wish McKay would do more running because he's an athletic guy. And I, I think that when you have a dual threat quarterback or one that can use his feet, it gets him into the rhythm of the game. On third down, he finds Tabari Hines Ball stayed right there to wrap him up a short gain and this crowd not happy with that play call on third and long. Well, listen, it would have worked had Chris Crum not read it from the start. I mean, he just flat out sees screen. He reads it, recognizes it, and reacts. Perfect defending there from Crum, who's one of the leaders for this Ball State defense, a senior at six foot, 272 pounds. That was a play that, that he'll remember and that could be you know, the reason why they hold him to a field goal here. A 34-yard attempt for Dunn. And one of the best kickers in the ACC, now two for two on the night. It's a 7-6 game. But you're starting to get the sense that Ball State is going to hang tonight, Ahmad. No doubt about it. I mean, this was a talented team. You, you, you spoke of, you know, what they've been able to do. Uh, you know, they could have potentially won Indiana. You see them at Florida Atlantic. L listen, this team is for real. This is not the kind of team that you want to play out of the MAC. And, and, and speaking of that, I, I think I think they are a true contender. I, I you know I, I believe that this is a team that as they as their experience, as you're looking at Coach New there, the head coach for the Cardinals. I, I believe this is a team that's got a shot to win a conference title. They've got I believe they've got excellent quarterback play. They've got a defense that's stingy. If they can shore up some of the things in the back end of this defense and prevent them from giving up these big plays, this could be the champion coming out of the mat. Eight starters back on offense, nine on defense. It's Mike New's fourth season. They have not won more than four games. I'm not willing to go as far as you talk about MAC championship, but this is an improved team, and it's a team that has played in big stadiums against Power Five teams. They opened up against Indiana at Lucas Oil Stadium, home of the Colts. They went to Notre Dame last year, and so that was the big thing for Mike New. They didn't really come here and do a big walkthrough, just 15 minutes, get a sense of the surroundings yesterday. The blackout, night game in Raleigh, that doesn't phase them. The ACC Network is your home for more ACC sports. Visit get ACCN.com to check for providers in your area. If you don't see yours listed, contact them to demand that they carry ACC Network. Well, and I think you just provided Drew Plitt some bulletin board material <laughs> because 
if, if I'm him and I'm looking at this the experience of this team it, listen I, I all I've got to say is when you've got a quarterback things change and they've they have found a guy that I think can keep them in every ball game now it's just about closing those out and remaining consistent Clint off to a strong start another completion this one pops out of the hands of Antoine Davis and I believe they're going to rule that a catch and a fumble and that's what they rule it as we've reached the end of quarter number one is an upset brewing on a Saturday night in Raleigh the Cardinals of Ball State with a 7-6 lead through one no excuses I, I got no excuses A blackout tonight at Carter Finley Stadium. It's ESPN College Football presented by Dr. Pepper. Ball State out of the Mid American with a one point lead as we go to the second quarter. Last play of that first quarter. A catch and a fumble out of bounds. So it's where the ball went out. Plitt throwing downfield on target again to Justin Hall. Drew Plitt, 10 out of 12 to open here on the road. Let, let me explain something to you as a defensive back. You, you are in no man's land there. When he throws it at the back of your head, that's called a paintball. Beautifully thrown ball to connect with his wide receiver on the edge. I hear the frustration in your voice. Plitt near sideline, completes again. And there is Riley Miller, who came to Ball State as a walk-on, used the, that redshirt season to bulk up, and he's become one of the better receivers in the MAC. His dad, Greg, was on the 1990 Ball State basketball team that went to the Sweet 16 and nearly upset eventual champion UNLV. It's easy to catch a ball thrown from Plitt that's thrown to the right shoulder, the right location, with the right weight on the pass as well. Plitt again on the slant, looking for Miller, and broken up that time by Chris Ingram. I like that coverage there. You know, you want to be on that upfield shoulder. You don't want to allow him to run that double move into you. And what I love about this play is he went with his left hand, secured the wide receiver with his right. Watch, perfect. You still can make that tackle if you go for the ball there. Outstanding coverage there from Ingram. Will Jones into the game on third down in the backfield. Seven receptions as a running back. Now Plitt, he has the autonomy to change the play at the line. Five-man pressure. Downfield. Juggled, and it's incomplete intended for Miller. And it would not surprise me if Ball State goes for it here on fourth down. Von Graves might have gotten his hand on that play, but Plitt, he didn't even care about the pressure. They bring a, 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 a nickel blitz. He sees it. It's right in his face. He sees it coming, waits and throws it. It looks like, once again, courageous coaching. They're going for it on fourth down. They're putting the hands, they're putting the ball in the hands of this quarterback that right now is carving up this NC State defense. Wolfpack bring pressure. Plitt downfield. Incomplete. No flag. Tyler was the target. A turnover on downs, and NC State gets it back. Ooh, they brought the house. <laughs> I mean, they did not wait. Uh, Dave Huxtable. I mean, he brought everything he had. Guys were popping up out of the ground, jumping out of helicopters. I mean, this is a house blitz. I mean, you know that the ball has to come out quickly if you're defensive back, and a poorly thrown ball from Plitt. The second one we've seen him throw, he missed an opportunity for a touchdown, then comes back here on fourth down and doesn't connect. New quarterback for NC State, it's Bailey Hockman. He'll hand it off to Ricky Person, tackled by White after just a gain of a yard. So this early in the game, a quarterback change. Matthew McKay, we heard all week, hey, the coaches had to put him in better spots and call better plays, and it wasn't all on McKay. And now, early second quarter, what do you make of a QB change? I'm not sure I understand it. He was 6 of 9, 47 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. I didn't think he was the reason why they've only got two field goals. Hockman throwing to Knight, who falls down after making the catch, and that's a negative play. Hockman is a lefty. He does everything right-handed. I should say he's right-handed. He does everything right-handed except to throw a football, which he does left-handed. You know, and, and, and you may think it's a subtle difference, but 
you know, I, I played at Texas with Chris Sims, who was a lefty, and Major Applewhite, who was right-handed. The ball spins different. It comes off different. It falls different. You know, it fades differently out of your out of your hand. That that's a big difference in terms of timing and anticipation. On third and long, five-man pressure. Hockman in trouble, escaping. He's got running room, and Hockman with a first down across midfield. The young man who originally committed to Georgia then ended up at Florida State, went to junior college before ending up in Raleigh. That'll get you started there. And, you know, Dave Dorn told his quarterbacks, he said, you've got to prepare like your starters. He was very honest with them. He said, there may come a point in the season where we will need you. If you're not ready, that is your fault. Hawkman with a big third down conversion using his feet extending the drive prior to this year he had not played in a game despite all those stops since his senior year of high school as the freshman Jordan Houston erupts for a 13 yard game I'm gonna tell you what now Jordan Houston he jumps off the page you, you watch him enough he's got big playability 5'10 185 young man from Maryland you saw him there the wiggle the ability to get into tight spaces and to make big plays Hockman has given this team a bit of a spark here He'll throw. Clean pocket. In traffic, intercepted. Ray Wilborn, who's had a tough start to the season, catches it off the tip, and it's the first turnover of the season for NC State. This this was a this was a nicely thrown ball. I, I mean, he puts it in a location. The wide receivers got to get. You just got to go get the ball for your guy there. I, I mean, this was Hines here now. Don't get it twisted. Bryce Cosby is a guy that can cover, he can play, he can tackle, he can do all those things. And when, on the other side, Ray Wilborn, he's been struggling. This will help this young man out. And Ishra, Fahmad Brooks, Chris Button with you. Carter Finley Stadium, where Ball State has the ball and a one point lead. The last play, an interception, the first turnover of the season for NC State. Ahmad, you say this is on the receiver. Hines has to come back to that football, especially when you hear when you feel that defensive back on your hip. Caleb Huntley pushed out of bounds. Only a gain of a yard. Drew Plitt, the Ball State quarterback out of Loveland, Ohio. Off to a great start, 11 of 16. Came into this week third nationally in passing yards behind Anthony Gordon of Washington State. And Joe Burrow of LSU. Only Gordon and Tua had more touchdowns entering the week. Peyton Wilson, the stop for NC State after a pickup of two. Uh, this is a Wolfpack defense missing some key pieces. Two captains, DB Nick McLeod and James Smith Williams on that defensive line, missing his second straight game. And Dave Doran talked about the leadership void. Three of the four captains are injured tonight, including their tight end, Auten Reed. Right, and now you missed the, the, the ability here on third down to rush the passer and, you know, to, to make that pocket less comfortable for Plitt as he's trying to connect on a third down here. NC State showing blitz. Here it comes, and Plitt devoured! Isaiah Moore, his second sack of the year. Great play call. Outstanding execution. Dave Huxtable dials up a five-man pressure and a twist on the outside edge coming from Isaiah Moore. It gets home. And those late twists really confuse offensive linemen because they don't see them. And so now if you're put, you've just got to eat that football. But NC State with a big third down stop that now gives them great field position uh, for their offense. Nathan Snyder will punt. Thayer Thomas to return. And a fair catch made by Thomas at his own 45. NC State with good starting field position again. They're down one. ESPN College Football brought to you by Haggerty for people who love cars. And Ashraf Ahmad Brooks, Chris Budden back with you. Some of the fine artwork by Sean Koenig. That's sweet. Yeah, I like it. 
Dave Dorn, a bit of a quarterback shuffle. We saw Bailey Hockman on the last drive, which ended in an interception that was not on the quarterback. And now Matthew McKay re-enters the game. And the message for McKay from the coaches this week, relax. Get the ball to your playmakers and trust your playmakers. NC State, the last team in the nation to turn it over. A reverse. Thayer Thomas will throw. Broken up by Cosby. Ball State read it all the way. This is where the football intelligence of Bryce Cosby separates him from everybody else. Now, you've got a reverse pass. So as a safety, you're coming downhill trying to attack that, but you've got to find targets. He does a great job of recognizing then the technique on the back end of that play to turn around at the perfect time, separate the wide receiver from the ball. Beautiful play there from Cosby. On the ground. Bam, Knight. Bullies his way across the 40, a gain of 16. And Ahmad, you said before the game started, he is one of the young players who has a chance to emerge as a go-to guy, as a true freshman. He got up a little gimpy there as he's limping off the field. And you're right, you, you saw that, that, that pop, that, that burst to get through the line of scrimmage. And he just flat out made a defender miss initially on that play because he just ran right by him. Ricky Person now in for Knight. Person gets the call up the middle through the barricade. And a nice pickup on first down from Person, who has battled all sorts of injuries in his two years on campus, had wrist surgery before last year, missed the spring after hip surgery, had a hamstring issue, and Person has been on a bit of a pitch count in practice, and now Knight being attended to on that NC State sideline. Trying to stretch out that left leg. McKay flushed. Completes to Hines. The well-traveled Tabari Hines for a first down, a gain of 19. Hines spent three years at Wake Forest, went to Oregon last year as a grad transfer, used a red shirt, played in four games, took advantage of the new rule. Now back in the ACC and Two of his best games in his career actually came against NC State while playing for Wake. And a whistle. Full start, offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty, first step. Full start on NC State. NC State down one, but they have been inside the Ball State 40 on every drive this game. Person tornadoes through the middle. Give him seven, second and eight. And to your point of Person and his inability to stay on the field, I think a lot of it has to do with his his rolling, I mean, his running style. I mean, you know, he's a big back, and, and he uses that weight. At 220, he comes downhill, he runs uh, with a physical presence, and, and oftentimes when guys run that hard, you know, you have to worry about them, the wear and tear on their body as a running back. And as he not in the game here, McKay will run. And taken down from behind, Jacob White with another tackle. Entering today, the Wolfpack had scored on all 15 trips in the red zone. Today, a couple of field goals. But against the team from the MAC, with all due respect, yeah, you expect those red zone trips to turn into six points. You would agree, and, and part of them scoring every time is because of Christopher Dunn. However, this is where, as a quarterback, you've really got to make plays happen. On the slant, that's complete. It'll set up a first and goal. Devin Carter, big six foot four target. Size wise, he duplicates what you lose in CJ Riley. Yeah, I, I like this. You know, this this is one of the hardest plays to defend down here. I mean, this is, this is not bad coverage on the backhand from Red Potts. He's in the right position. The reality of it is that large frame, if you're Carter and you use it in that way, you're going to make that catch, and you're going to be reliable on those third and shorts. Person across the goal line. NC State back on top. A 
Freeman, this is a nice job by Person. He just powers through. You know, the offensive line gets great push up front. They do a fantastic job. Gibson, the center, getting out in front, getting to the second level, him running right in behind. And that is a great drive for NC State in this offense, particularly McKay. The ability to roll out, connect on the one play to keep the drive going. And they did what they needed to do in order to score points there and to score a touchdown. PAT good by Dunn. So McKay re-entering the game after Bailey Hockman came in for a drive and McKay leading his team downfield with the help of the run game for a touchdown. Extra yard for Teachers Week is an annual celebration led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that honors great teachers across the country. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard or search the hashtag Extra Yard Week. Maude, I know your mom is an educator. Yeah, this is important. I mean, how many how many teachers have impacted the lives of student athletes? Normally, you find a favorite one that, that challenges you in an area that, that maybe you have a difficulty in learning. And mine just happened to be at home. <laughs> so every subject that I didn't like or didn't want to be good at, uh, she made sure I did that before I got outside to go throw the football. <laughs> Malik Dunner to the 22, one of Ball State's best players, Chris, also has teachers in the family. Yes, Riley Miller, the wide receiver. Both of his parents, Greg and Yvonne, are lifelong parents. Mom, a first grade teacher, dad, a PE teacher. He told me he's always had an appreciation for, appreciation for what they do, educating the next generation. He also said, secondly, because mom was a first grade teacher, if I always got in trouble, she was the first to know. So I always knew I had to be on my best behavior. <laughs> I can relate to that. You know, my mom just, she didn't even need a pass to get into the school as you see Greg and Yvonne Miller. As we said earlier, Greg on that 1990 basketball team at Ball State that went to the Sweet 16, Justin Hall. And he's able to pick up a first down, living up to his nickname. They call him Sticks. And it's because he wears number 11, a jersey he's worn most of his career. That slender build, I mean, at 5'9", 181, I mean, he's just doing a nice job of slithering through the defense. And you know, though he's a wide receiver, he runs after they hand him the football off like a running back. This time they do hand it off, and it's Walter Fletcher who's met in the backfield. Laurel Murchison, the first to get there. Undersized, but insanely productive defensive tackle. Look, look let me tell you something now. This kid's a ball player, and it's someone and the NFL is going to find him a ball player in Murchison. I mean, I love the way he dissects plays. He's very technique sound, and he has a high motor. He does not give up on plays. And look, he's hard. He is hard to block. Reminds me of a guy from Texas named Puna Ford, who's now starting for the Seattle Seahawks. Clint with time, and that's through the hands of his intended target, Paul. Third down. Puna Ford, why? Well, you know, Puna Ford was a guy who didn't, didn't play a whole lot at the University of Texas. He goes and he starts his senior year. He wins Big 12 Defensive Lineman of the Year. He was a free agent from the Seattle Seahawks. Next thing you know, he's starting. Started every game of his career for the Seattle Seahawks and one of their more productive and dominant uh, defensive linemen. In this, not as tall, he's not as tall as Murchison, but they play very similarly in terms of their craftiness and their ability to make plays behind the line of scrimmage. Clint beats the play clock on the slant. Catch is made. No, it's incomplete. Ingram there to break it up. And the kick team on for the Cardinals. Well, here's what happened. You know, Ball State, they, they remember them bringing the house blitz, so they keep in max protect, which puts Ingram on that island by himself. He gets an excellent jam at the line of scrimmage. And the wide receiver's route was dead, and no question about it. And then Ingram finishes off the play with an aggressive pass breakup. Once again, Ingram showing why most of, the, most of the teams have thrown to the other side of the field because right now he's in a good rhythm at that corner spot. Good punt by Snyder. Thomas chased back to his own 15. And 
and tripped up after a short return. Ball State has had a strong history of producing punters going back to Brad Maynard in the early 90s. Tomorrow, Sunday NFL countdown back at 10 a.m. on ESPN. Best catches from college with Randy Moss. You got Moss. Patrick Mahomes breaks down the art of the no-look pass. Deshaun Watson goes Phileas Fogg on us. He'll take a he'll give us a look at his around-the-world trip. And then Monday Night Football, Bears and Redskins. Washington looking for its first win of the year. Matthew McKay completes on first down to Emeji, who had a career day last time. 12 catches, 103 against West Virginia. Now ruled incomplete. He was out of bounds. So we've seen the quarterback shuffle here a little bit. McKay got the start. Bailey Hockman came in for a drive. Now McKay back in for his second to drive. And NC State fans hope this isn't a precursor to 2013 when it was you know, Pete Thomas, Brandon Mitchell, and a revolving cast of characters at quarterback as Ricky Person gets to the 25. That was Dave Doran's first season in Raleigh. NC State went three and nine. 2013 was also the only time since 2008 that the Wolfpack played without a future NFL quarterback under center. Person moves the chains. We saw Zonovan Bam Knight leave the game on the last drive, limping off the field. That snap surprised McKay. Down the middle of the field, and it's caught! Lassane for a first down. Wow, he just threw right into the teeth of the defense. That ball had some zip on it from McKay. He's got all the intangibles, but the catch there to finish off that play there was, was outstanding. McKay, plenty of time. Checks down, has person. Chris with an update on Zonovan Knight. Yeah, Knight has been down here stretching out his left hamstring. He also has an elastic band on it that connects down to his ankle that prevents him from being able to stretch it out too far. He's been trying to sprint down here and stretching it out in the meantime. Injuries have taken a toll on this team on both sides of the ball early. Person again, a yard maybe, third down. This might be four down territory for NC State here at the 45 with momentum on their side. I would agree. And, and, and right now, you want this offensive line to really gain some confidence in their ability to push Ball State back. Now, Ball State, you won't see a lot of tall, tall guys across that, that line, but they've got guys that are smaller and have better leverage because of their height. And they hunker down in there, and I mean, it's hard to move. Amezi, first down. I spoke to his high school coach, Aubrey Carter, this week, and you know, we talked about can Emeka Amezi handle being the guy. He wears Kelvin Harmon's old number three, and Coach Carter said, yeah, absolutely. This kid was built to be the guy in the receiving game, and he is no doubt their number one receiver right now. I like him. And then, you know, when he comes up, he plays with a lot of excitement. He makes the game fun. Person. Rumbles inside the 20, another red zone opportunity for NC State. Listen, I'm just going to be frank here. McKay looks like a different quarterback since being replaced by Hockman. You know, we, they told us about him being calm, right, and cool and collected. That particular pass, I mean, he's standing with confidence in the pocket, and he once again throws another ball on a perfect location as this offense right now is rolling um, under McKay's leadership. McKay looking at Amezi, who makes the catch first and goal. There was some criticism last week. He would lock in on a receiver. If you're going to lock in on a, guy, on a guy, number three is not a bad guy to lock in on. He's a playmaker, and he's not scared. Okay, Now, this is just RPO action, so he can hand the ball off there. But as soon as those defensive linemen time out there for Ball State. But as soon as those Before defensive the linemen pulled, came into was... the interior run, Correction. and those Before linebackers also uh, bite State. on the run, it opens up a time passing time. window, you know, so large. And McKay, he did a, he's done a great job all season, particularly in the first two games of finding that window in the RPO package. And that time there, I mean, he barely, he 
barely threw that thing in with just a matter of inches to go before Cosby came through to separate the wide receiver from the ball. Ahmad, I live in the state of North Carolina, and sometimes with NC State fans, and I've got a lot of them, <laughs> one loss can sometimes trigger an emotion, and against Ball State today, I think a lot of Wolfpack fans wanted to see a dominant effort early on. A lot of miscues. They let Ball State hang around. You're right, though. Since McKay re-entered the game, this looks like a different offense. Absolutely. And you saw those miscues on those first two plays, and he comes back and just throws darts right into narrow windows and making those completions with his wide receivers. Now, and here's where I think down here inside of the 10, he could also use his feet to really stress the defense. McKay will use his feet. Stutter step, a little shake. Matthew McKay in for the touchdown. Different guy. He's cooking now. I mean, he's really cooking now. I mean, the confidence has grown. And, 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 you know, he's not one of those types of quarterbacks that's going to always beat you with his feet. But he's athletic enough. You saw the stutter step there. And then get around that edge. Uh, this is why he won the job. I, I think not that these other two quarterbacks aren't capable of that, but you saw the big arm, you saw the accuracy when he when he can make those plays, and then the feet there to really put the pressure on the defense inside of the red zone. And when you've got a guy that can beat you with his arm and his feet, defenses all around the country dread going against these types of players. Great decision here. That was him to make as that play fake really faked out Ray Wilbur, and then he gave him the, uh-oh, and just hits that corner of the pylon. McKay, two excellent drives for the Wolfpack. The philosopher John Locke said no man's knowledge can go beyond his experience. And when we talked to this NC State coaching staff. You're so smart. Man. That was the theme. No, I'm not. I <laughs> probably forgot to lock the door on the way out. <laughs> but this NC State coaching staff talked to us so much about, especially on the offensive side, we just need experience, experience. And that's true for Matthew McKay, and maybe that Bailey Hockman insertion wow. had something to do with, let's see how he responds to someone lighting a fire under him, a little adversity, and I tell you what, McKay has responded Indeed. with an exclamation point. And he's hot like fish grease, fish grease right now. I mean, uh, if you're doing, you, you, you make that decision, and we asked him very frankly, our crew did yesterday in our, our meetings, at what point do you pull it? And, and that's been asked by, you know, give this the, the local media credit, too, because they've been asking the question all year long as well. And he said, I'm going to stick with my guy. But you saw early on, and I think that was the right decision. You know, early on, I said I didn't like it. But now, to see the way he's come out and perform, I think all he needed was a little pressure on him. And, and uh, McKay has come out, and he's been, he's been fantastic. Buick drive recap. Matthew McKay on the evening, 13 out of 17, 135 yards. He and Emeka Amezi, their roommates, they have already forged a pretty sweet connection. Yeah, I mean, you've got a big target there. That time there, just taking his time. And then he caps this drive off with an excellent run to beat Wilborn to the, to the pylon. Flit underneath. That's Riley Miller. The clock will continue to run. A minute and a half to go in this first half. Big drive for Ball State. Bat it down, back to Plitt. That goes as a reception. It'll bring up third down. Clock continues to run. And as we're giving McKay credit on the offensive side, give NC State's defense credit for shutting Plitt down. He came out on fire. And since that time, they've, they've had some contested throws on the edges that have been great. Man coverage. And that time, it's Miller for a first down. That'll momentarily stop the clock at the 46-yard line. 59 seconds to go. Clock starts as the official spot it. Flip back to the air. Near sideline. Hall. He's not going to get out of bounds. He is in NC State territory, a gain of seven. And Ball State uses its second timeout of the half. And you got to remember here, Ahmad, Ball State does not have a reliable kicking game. Rimler, just two of five on the season, his long 30. That will definitely affect his ability, Coach New's ability to, to determine what he's going to do. And, and, and if I'm the quarterback, Plitt, I know I've, I've, I've got the opportunity. We're more than likely going to have a shot to at least throw the, to heave this ball into the end zone. 
What you've got to do now if you're NC State's defense, the trick with, with these types of situations is you want to keep everything in front of you. You want to protect your boundary. But when you do that, sometimes you leave the middle of the field wide open because you're thinking, well, they're not going to throw it here. They're trying to throw it to the boundary, preserve time. So it's tricky. What teams like to do here, double moves, where they, you set up this defensive back with him thinking he's rolling outside and it's an out and up, and they push you down that line and come up with a big play. And then you've also got to have a quarterback that's just savvy enough to make the right decisions and, and, and ultimately beat the defense. Clint, downfield, looking for Dunner, incomplete. Keyshawn Miller was there to break it up. He had some help, too. I don't think he needed it there. That, that's, that's great coverage. You know, and uh, Miller, early on in, in the first two series, was really, they were attacking. They were going after him. But here, I mean, the head, his ability to turn his head at the right time, he kept that right hand right in between the wide receiver's hands. That's how you separate him from the football. Find coverage there from um, Keyshawn Miller. 41 seconds, third and three. Ball State with one timeout. Clint on the slant. That ball was deflected. It'll bring up fourth down. And let's see what Mike New does here. Well, I don't think so. Not so fast. <laughs> well, he's taking so many risks tonight, it wouldn't surprise me. But I'll also say this, too. In between the 40s, when it's fourth down territory, it is also the prime opportunity to run a fake. And with third and with fourth and three, I mean, this is a distance that could easily be made. So let's, let's see if he's still gutsy enough to try it again on a fourth down or if he actually puts this one in and, and allows his defense to, uh, to make their offense drive the length of the field. Snyder just got it off. It takes a Ball State bounce and crosses the goal line, and it's a touchback. Next Saturday, primetime on ABC, Ohio State visits Nebraska. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. How about the hurting Ohio Woo. State put on Miami University today? That's the one in Ohio. What did they score, 72? Oh, man. I, look. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, you, you thought Urban Meyer being gone, you're wondering what's going to happen to this I thought program. this was Michigan's year in the Big Ten. No, okay. it's not. Jeez, I mean, <laughs> they are they are doing exactly what they need to be doing. They're scoring points, they're playing stinky defense, and not much has really changed there in Columbus. Ohio State still at the vanguard in the Big Ten. Michigan lost badly today to Wisconsin. McKay to the air. Finds Thayer Thomas. Cuts it back toward the middle of the field. That'll momentarily stop the clock. 20 seconds left in the half. NC State has two timeouts. I don't mind the end of that run. I'm trying to make a move, but it would have been better for him to get out of bounds as Ball State calls a timeout. You know, because if he gets out of bounds now, you don't have to really pressure yourself to, to get into this next play call. But that's great first down yardage there to put them in an opportunity where on the opposite side, we talked about Ball State having issues with um, <laughs> their ability to kick field goals. That is not the case uh, for North Carolina State. And we know, I believe in the spring game, we saw a Dunn or kick a 55 yarder. I mean, so this kid has range. And, and Dorn told us yesterday, he said, we're gonna give him an opportunity at the end of the game or end of half to really put a foot in one and try to, to get some more points. And so they've got the ball now close to uh, the 45. They've got it at the 42. If they can get inside the Ball State 40, you give Dunn at least a chance. Yeah, he missed from 51 last week at West Virginia. That was the first time he had missed after making 19 in a row. And McKay, yeah, he started 8 of 11, 71 yards. Since he came back after Hockman was inserted, 6 of 7, 86 yards, and a rushing touchdown. Four-man rush. McKay looking for Thomas over his head. 17 seconds to go in this first half. That's one of those lonely moments for our kicker over there. You want your opportunity, and we, we always try to not talk to him. You know, just let that guy do his thing over there, get in his, his zone, get in his space, but 
I mean, those are great numbers, and, and you'd anticipate that this young man is going to have an opportunity to kick on Sundays. Must have been a challenge for you as a DB. <laughs> Get out. Off the hands of Lachine. It'll bring up third down. I mean, you haven't stopped talking since the car ride. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Talked a lot of what the car ride over. <laughs> you know, that was a, a well-thrown ball. And we've seen a few drops, but that's one you've got to make because the closer you can get to this range now, now you're really looking at a third and long situation. And I don't think Ball State is silly enough to, to bring the house here and, you know, to, to, to leave their defensive backs and second level exposed, but got to make that catch. Thayer Thomas brings it down and has a first down for NC State. Eight seconds to go. Again, the Wolfpack have two timeouts. Clock momentarily stopped until the officials spot the ball. Terrific throw. Back to Thomas. He scampers out of bounds. Four seconds to go. It's a tricky area here. Unless you try to line it up, because... 41 yard line, so you're looking at about a 58 yarder from here. Is the Hail Mary the better play? It looks like that's what they're going to go with. Right side, top of your screen, that's where I'd throw it. And an offsides, if this is against Ball State, Great. this may give Dunn a chance. Offside, defense number 32. Yeah, they're going to take five yard penalty, second down. You're absolutely right, Anish, and those five yards are costly. Terrible penalty in that spot by Clayton Call, the freshman. And now Dunn will have a chance. This will be a 54-yarder. His career long is 49. As Ahmad said, he hit from beyond 50 in the spring game. Low line drive kick, no good. That thing had another 10 yards on it. Need to hit it on point. Wow. It tested the limits of Dunn's range, and Ball State avoids allowing NC State put on another three points. NC State started slow, finished strong in that first half. They've got a 27 lead. Kevin Connors and the guys will catch you up on all the action around college football after this. ESPN College Football presented by Dr. Pepper. Ball State had a 7-6 lead after one quarter. NC State made some adjustments going forward. And the Wolfpack with a 20-7 lead as we get ready for the start of the third quarter. And Ishraf alongside Ahmad Brooks, Chris Budden down on the sidelines. What changed in that second quarter? Well, I thought early on Ball State was really, they, they were under command. And, and that started with their quarterback, Drew Plitt, who started out on fire. This guy was connecting all over the field and really picking the NC State defense apart. I mean, just balls on the money time and time again. And then all of a sudden, Matthew McKay comes out he gets replaced by Hawkman, and when I say he starts going on a run, this kid was phenomenal, connecting on big third downs like here. And then he comes back and caps it off with a touchdown run and a little herky jerk to get into the end zone. And McKay, I thought, was the difference in those, in those last two scoring drives. The only two touchdowns uh, for um, the Wolfpack, and I, I thought he was phenomenal. And let, let's see if he can continue that pace into the second half. What was that he came back with? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure I heard you. This is who's slinging it, brought to you by Sling TV. Plitt came in with the big numbers today. McKay, his biggest thing was taking care of the ball. He's done that, but he's been more of a playmaker than a game manager tonight, especially, as you said, Ahmad, since re-entering the game. NC State to receive to begin this third quarter. Lassane from his own one. 
spun down shy of the 20. Chris Budden with Dave Doran a little while ago. Coach Owen in the decision to use Bailey Hockman in that one series. Uh, during the week we talked about it. You know, I haven't seen him play other than mop up duty in a game and wanted to see how he would do. So we made that decision last Sunday and that's how we'll do it. McKay seemed to play differently since then. What have you seen out of him? Yeah, Matt's done some good things. I mean, he overthrew a deep ball, you know, and like the receivers have done some good things, catching some contact balls for him, too. He's got to make the plays that are there. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right, thank you. Matthew McKay to throw on first down in traffic, nearly intercepted by Jacob White off the tip, intended for a Mezzi. Ricky Person comes out as the running back to begin the third quarter. Zonovan Knight, the freshman who started for the second straight week, left the game in that first half and has not returned. I think that's a big blow for them. He was really running with some authority, averaging four and a half yards a carry. Person runs into a roadblock. Christian Albright with the stop, and it sets up third down. It's a solid bunch up front. We've talked about them, and they've been strong with the front seven. And they make it difficult for teams to run. You know, coming into this ball game, they were giving up less than 75 yards a game on the ground. And this is an excellent job of just dissecting, fighting off blocks. And now on your third down, you're really able to do some things if you're the, the defensive coordinator, David Elson, in terms of putting pressure on McKay and forcing him to think quickly and to find the open target. NC State, 8 out of 10 on third downs. McKay takes a shot, downfield incomplete, intended for Thomas, and three and out go the Wolfpack. That's a great start for them. And now I'm not sure at the end of that play if the defense back was a little handy, but uh, they let him play through the contact, and he, he got what he was looking for. So they, you get a four-man rush, you've got plenty of time. At the end of that play, you, you might say that there was contact there, but appeared to be incidental as they were both fighting for the football, but they dropped seven back and clogged up those passing windows and a great start for the Cardinals. Trenton Gill, the former walk-on, sends this one downfield, and here's Riley Miller. Does not get very far, a 45-yard punt down to Chris. I spoke with Mike New coming out of half, and he said, we got to get back to playing tempo. But in order to do that, we have to get first down, stay ahead of the chains. Now, one interesting thing, Caleb Huntley, the running back, injured his ankle in the first quarter, has not been able to play as many snaps as usual, usually playing between about 75 to 80 percent of the snaps. Coach said he is still going to try and stick it out. Now we'll see how effective he is. Remember, Ball State already playing without its starting center, Andrew Painish. Anthony Todd starting at center. First time he's done that for Ball State. And Huntley, a little banged up, gets the call on first down. Only a gain of two. And if he's not at full go, that's a game changer for Ball State about it. Yeah, definitely. You know, anytime you have a, a playmaker that is, you know, hampered by injury. It, it, it hurts because these are reliable playmakers that you're depending on. And Huntley off the field after that one carry. Walter Fletcher in it running back. Plitt over the middle. That one skips on his intended target. Third and long. And now you're in a spot where NC State can dial up the pressure. That's been very effective tonight. Yeah, and they've done it with five and six man pressure at times and really put the pressure on their defensive backs. One thing that you've noticed in an adjustment they've made, and this is an aggressive defense, they've been in press coverage on the edges, getting in these wide receivers' uh, faces and forcing these guys to fight to get off of the line of scrimmage to get into their route. Here's the blitz, picked up, flip. Low throw, incomplete. They intended for Tyler and Ball State, three and out. And this is the first time tonight we were really able to talk about Tanner Engel. I mean, this guy is phenomenal. They've got him listed at 5'10", 188. I'm not sure. I stood by him at practice yesterday, but he comes right up the gut. And he's the heart and soul of this defense. And Dorn said yesterday, he said, listen, we've got to expect a sophomore like him to play like a veteran now. It's his time. It's his turn. Coming up big there, blitzing from the safety spot to force the three and out. Also, three of the four team captains are injured. Thayer Thomas reverses field, cuts it up. 
Thomas gets a block. He's got a chance. Thayer Thomas makes a house call. Well, you knew at some point it was going to happen. Who was going to win that third phase of the game special teams? And here, this punt was driven in. These, these punts are easy to field. They come up on you quickly. It allows, uh, it, it doesn't allow the coverage to get to you as a returner. So that space there allowed him to be able to make that move, get into it. But a nice job of weaving by Thomas. And the rest is history. Blocking up front combined with the low punt. And as you said, in each house call as the Wolfpack score on special teams. A 76-yard punt return for a score by Thayer Thomas. Early fireworks in the third quarter for the Pack. Hey, you're watching the ACC on ESPN, and right now Clemson is carrying all the flags for this league. There have been some significant missteps in non-conference early on. Syracuse blowtorched by Maryland. Kansas, first Power 5 road win since 2008 against BC. Kansas gave West Virginia a scare earlier today. Georgia Tech, go figure, losing to the Citadel, which runs option. And then today, App State knocking off UNC. The Mountaineers up in Boone, undefeated. Old Dominion with a two-score lead on Virginia in the second half. And, wow. Ahmad, we saw Virginia a yeah. few weeks ago, and we walked away thinking, hey, that's the second-best team in this conference. I, I did, and I, I think they're the favorite for the Coastal, obviously. But after seeing that, you know, and this is why we were talking about it today. When, when, you, when you experience those upsets, it's normally when your team overlooks the, uh, the other team. And having played at the University of Texas, I remember there's some games that it was just hard to get up for. And that is where... These teams that are challenged by playing you and, and feel a, a great opportunity to show the NFL scouts, to show their families on prime time that they can play. This is where they really step up. Drew Plitt begins under center. Handing off to Huntley, looking for the edge and good pursuit that time by NC State. Tyler Baker Williams, one of the nickelbacks, making the tackle. Just joining us, no James Smith-Williams out for the second straight game. The star defensive lineman and one of the best, if not the best, student athlete in all of collegiate sports. That's a catch by Riley Miller. Third down for Ball State. Early on, they were able to move the chains and get to their tempo. NC State has brought pressure and dictated on third downs since the first two drives. And they haven't been able to go as fast as they'd like, and part of that is... Flag down. Illegal substitution offense. There was 12 players in formation. Five-yard penalty, third down. Well, now Dave Huxtable can really dial it up. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> and so if you're Ball State right now and you're... Um, Coach, no, you're thinking, who is going to be the leader? Who is going to be the guy to, to be the stopper? And you'd like for that to be your quarterback, who's now in a third and long situation with an opportunity to get his team going if he can connect here and extend this drive. But if not, it's clear that NC State, after a punt return and the way their offense played at the latter part of the second half, they are in full command right now of the, the momentum. Low snap. Flip. Looking, finds Miller, and a first down for Riley Miller. We said it early, throw it in his radius. He'll likely come down with it. He's got great ball skills, and, and he catches the ball away from his body, as you'll see here. And, and the one thing that I really like about him is, did you see him work back to the football? Something we talked about earlier, those experienced wide receivers know, go work for your quarterback. That one step was the difference in, in, in uh, Keyshawn Miller not making that play. That was a great third down conversion for the Cardinals. Hall in motion. And Fletcher wrapped up behind the line. And a flag is down at the end of the play. After the play, 
personal foul, unnecessary roughness defense. Number 90, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Freshman mistake by Savion Jackson, one of the most highly touted recruits of his class. He just got a little too aggressive. You know, he makes a play and, and it just finishes it off here. When you hear that whistle, you've got to stop. And that's where he came right there. Just that's dunking. a tough one. It is, it is hard to hear the whistle. But you've got to train yourself. You know when it's happening. And um, a costly penalty there is something that the young man will learn from. Now to midfield. Clint, far sideline, low throw again. Incomplete. Tomorrow, Boomer and TJ are back with NFL Primetime, 7.30 Eastern, only on ESPN+. Plus. Highlights, breakdowns from the day's games, updates after the Sunday night and Monday night games. SVP and Joe Tess will be a part of the fun as well. Love that music. On second down, Flit hands it off. There is Fletcher. Sets up a third and short after a gain of about nine. Walter Fletcher, Division II transfer from Edinburgh, the Fighting Scots out in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Going quickly. Plitt throws, completes. It's Tyler. Johannes Tyler, 15 yards, and a first down. And this is the rhythm Ball State had early. You're totally right. And, and the more that they can get into this, and when they when we start pressing the gas on the defense, it's hard to stop. Five-man pressure. Plitt going long. It's broken up. Keyshawn Miller was there. Not sure where that ball was thrown there. And after being so accurate early on in the ball game, Plitt, pressure has gotten to him. You know, and, and it's a little bit different. I mean, this, this defense that is run, you know, and by the, the Wolfpack gets aggressive. I mean, and they are going to come after you. You don't have to question whether or not they are going to blitz you and pressure you. They want to make that, that quarterback uncomfortable. Given the tight end motions, Huntley broke the initial tackle and gets back to the line of scrimmage. So another third and long. And again, given the field position here and the lack of a reliable kicking game, this may be four down territory uh, for Bike News Team. Yeah, that plus the score. You know, and, and at this point, you don't want this thing to get out of hand. And, and so if, if you're Plitt, which is, which is what he's done a good job of, is checking down when things aren't available at the top of the defense as the blitz looks like it's on its way. Here it comes. Plitt rolling to his right. Hit as he throws it. It's out of bounds. Fourth down. I mean, that was zero coverage. Zero means there is nobody in the middle of the field. It is man-to-man -man coverage they locked him down and give credit to this secondary one of the most difficult uh, plays to make is when you have no help in the middle of the field but you saw the coverage there they were smothering the passing targets there for Plitt and yeah, I think he did a wonderful job of throwing that football away as the pressure was caving in a 43 yarder for Rimler 0 for 2 beyond 40 this season Plenty of distance, and it's good. Ball State gets three, 27-10. This week, NC State hosted rape survivor and activist Brenda Tracy, whose platform set the expectation, strives to educate college and high school coaches and players on the culture that surrounds sexual violence. Tracy visited with the Wolfpack athletes back in April as well to discuss her story of survival after being gang raped by four football players back in 1998. Tracy set the expectation campaign focuses on raising awareness through sports and signing a pledge in the name of fostering safer and more respectful cultures within athletics. Powerful message, certainly, and one that has resonated with this football team. Chris Budden will have a report on how Brenda Tracy was brought to campus and how this set the expectation weekend really came about. The same. Tripped up at the 27, Chris. 
Anish, when Brenda Tracy came here in April, James Smith Williams was so moved by her speech that he and Vinny Duran, a player for the men's soccer team, organized a donation drive at a baseball game to give to a local organization that helps domestic violence survivors. And for those who know Smith Williams, it does not come as a surprise. He just recently was named to the AFLAC AFCA Good Works team and received the honor in front of his team yesterday. It's something that his mom has instilled in him at a young age. And James Smith Williams, like you said, a big part of getting Brenda Tracy back to campus and spreading a message that Frankly, we all need to hear more in our current culture. Second down, Ricky Person gets the call. He now becomes the primary back with Donovan Knight banged up. And it appears Knight is unlikely to return as long as NC State has a comfortable lead. And Knight left the game in the first half, limping off the field. No further word on the extent of what happened. Third and short. Ball State's defense comes up with the stop. NC State's lone score in this second half was on a punt return touchdown, which now looms even larger. They knew the run was coming, and it's a lot easier to attack downhill in those types of situations, and that's exactly what the defense did, as it appears as though right now, see what the Wolfpack is doing here. It looks like they're bringing in the muscle, <laughs> and they're going to forcefully try to uh, convert this fourth down here as Ball State responds by bringing in larger bodies. You got 10 on the play clock. I wonder if this is a ploy to maybe draw the defense off sides. Don't go for it. A whistle before the snap. Ball start, offense, number 71. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Left guard Joe Sculthorpe, and now the decision is easy for Dave Doran. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, because, you know, right then and there, you learn something about your team if you're Doran, because, yeah, and you can see the frustration. You learn something about your team because you need that. I mean, if you really want to put your foot on their neck and finish this ball game going in late into the third quarter, that's when you do it. And now you force them, you know, they're, this is a three score game if you're Ball State. They've shown that they can score and move up and down the field quickly, despite it being in the first quarter. Another flag. Ball start, offense, number 28. Five yard penalty, fourth down. That is the fifth false start on NC State. Penalties were a bit of a problem last week. The defense has been much better than it was against West Virginia. And the offense has had its moments, but you get the sense with so much youth on that side, that unit will be a work in progress probably all season. Fair catch by Miller, a 55-yard punt that flips the field. Nicely done by Trenton Gill. AP rankings brought to you by Allstate. Georgia trailing Notre Dame in a top 10 clash. Seven zip that game in the second quarter. Clemson had the win against Texas A&M. It looks like they're going to feast on the ACC. Do the Tigers have any margin for error given the state of the rest of the conference? I certainly think so. I mean, you know, the, the reality of it is, is this is a team that has played just as well, if not better, in the college football playoff as Alabama. And I think those two teams um, will always, until someone unseats them as being the two realest contenders in college football, absolutely. Well, we get a penalty. Ball start, offense, number 76, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Luke Martin, the left guard, Justin Hall, got knocked backwards with NC State charging off the line. 
I think Clemson will earn the benefit of the eye test. Indeed. Much like Alabama has in years past with one loss. The Pac-12 with Utah losing to USC, are they done? No, I don't think so. I, I think when I start to look at that schedule, too. Fletcher. Nice run there by Fletcher to get outside at least. I, I think when I look at that, uh, Utah has three of their four ranked games, uh, ranked opponents right now at home. And, and you start to look at Oregon. They're on the road um, with a bunch of big matchups. And then Washington, I believe, has the easiest of, of the matchups there remaining in the Pac-12. So I think those are the three contenders. I, you know, depending on what happens to running back Zach Moss, who went out yesterday or or they could have beaten USC with their best player off the field. That's that's a tough one, and they still made it a game. I think Utah's still the favorite. Utah does have that big game against UW on the road, and that's not till November. Flint had trouble with the snap, recovers, throws far sideline, and Hall able to make the catch close to the marker. It'll bring up third down. Drew Plitt. Took over late last year when Riley Neal got hurt. Then Neal left to go to Vanderbilt as a graduate transfer. And Fletcher started acting like the starting quarterback as Fletcher picks up a first down. That had a lot to do with the coaches trusting Drew to be the guy this season. They felt, yeah, he earned it on the field too. But when nobody was watching, when he knew he wasn't going to play last year, he would still be in the film room and study like a starter. Ahmad, you know that isn't very common when guys know they're not going to see the field. It's hard. It's hard to do. Plitt under pressure escapes, buys time, throws behind his receiver. This past January, it was Plitt who was leading a lot of the offseason workouts. He got to know not just the guys on offense, but the guys on defense, and that showed the coach something. Charismatic young man. They said that they saw the guy who won state championships in high school, although he is afraid of the dark. <laughs> it makes you wonder, what's his passer rating since darkness has engulfed us here in Raleigh? <laughs> and we have a blackout. Huntley cuts a jagged path. He'll be close to a first down, Chris. Well, I asked Drew Plitt why he was afraid of the dark. He said, I grew up in the woods, and so we had this basement door that if it opened was just dark and went out into all the trees. So since then, he's been afraid of the dark. He also wants to know who from Ball State is sharing all of his personal secrets. Oh, that's a good one. Plitt's throw too high for Davis, fourth down. He's trying to connect there. That, that was... That was a window that really put Antoine Davis in a poor spot. And watch the pop here. Clean hit from Tanner Engel. Boy, is he little, but he's like dynamite. I mean, he just runs through here. He might have could have caught early contact there, but the lead with the shoulder, head out of the way. Tanner Engel with the big hit that puts Davis on the sideline, being attended now by the trainer. Snyder to punt it away to Thayer Thomas. Return to kick 76 yards for a score earlier in this half. Good punt. Fair catch called for. Made inside the 10. A 55-yard kick by Snyder. Wolfpack ball. Welcome back. There is a sign here in Carter Finley Stadium. It's been here since 1996. You may wonder what it is. It's Myrtle Beach backs the pack. It started by Tommy Moore the second and his son, Tommy Moore the third. They wanted to show the students here and the fans and the players that, hey, we represent you too coming from Myrtle Beach. Here's the interesting thing. This has been in every game. That sign right there is a new one that they brought out for the blackout. Jordan Houston exploding. All the way across the 30 for a gain of 25. Looked like he wanted to take that to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> yeah, that was sweet. And you can see that the, the staff is really excited about this young, young man here, the freshman from Waldorf, Maryland. Nice job there of squeezing through the hole. He, he's got a, he does a nice job of controlling his body, and, and he still can get to his top end speed rather quickly. And, and he's going to be a player to watch in years to come.
Houston again. Brings it to the 41. Give him nine yards. Help people affected by Hurricane Dorian. Your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the U.S. and the Bahamas. www.redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. McKay has his pass knocked down. And it's third down. It's batted down there by Jake Thomas. Thirteen penalties in all tonight. Seven on NC State, six on Ball State. There's no foul for defensive pass interference. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. They're watching the Utah USC game last night. You couldn't go two plays without a penalty marker. Mike New, head coach for Ball State, back in Raleigh for the first time since 2002 when he was head coach of the Carolina Cobras. Of the AFL lost his last game here on a Hail Mary off the netting. Person looks like he's going to be just short. It's fourth down. He left the ground there, and you want to stay on those feet and be able to power through. But as it appears, though, they're going to go forward here on fourth down. And this is one of those plays where if you're Matthew McKay, like I said, putting pressure on the defense with your legs, we saw him um, come out. Uh, late in the second quarter with a touchdown with his feet. Make sure they defend you. I'd go back to the zone read, read option. Looks like here they're going to line up and try to run it right down uh, the middle. Person. And I think that initial surge might give it to him. It's going to depend on the spot. I don't think so. It's going to be close. It's a great defense there. Jalen Thomas again. They will measure. I mean, this defense, they attack the ball. Watch Jalen Thomas. I mean, he knows, he dissects and knows exactly where that ball's coming. And he just waits. He flows to the football freely. And makes a nice play there for the Cardinals. Now, this is a big moment in this game. Wow. Nose of the football, literally. <laughs> They got it. We saw Dave Doran send his team out to go for it last time in minus territory. Yeah. And a couple of penalties changed his mind. That time they convert. That one paid off, and, and they were going to go for it earlier in the ball game, but you had a penalty that backed him up, which forced him to punt. Now they may look at the spot. I think they should here. Mike New over there conversating with the officials. Really enjoyed my time with him yesterday, just talking to the staff and, and their loyalty and commitment. And, and both of these guys, Dorn and New alike, I, th I thought their approach uh, to their players, what they were trying to do with the season, they were both very honest with us and, and upfront about uh, where their teams were at. And, and I think that showed. Let's have another look. there from that angle. I guess the best way here is to look at the hash mark if you want to try to determine the distance. That side view would probably be the one that I would assume the, the officials would look at the most. Let's have a look here. The 43-yard line was the original line to gain. Just not sure you're going to see enough to overturn. Three. After further review, the runner's progress was stopped at the 42 and a half yard line. He will be short of the first down. First down. It will be Ball State's ball, first and ten. Wow. Well, I, I mean, I said it early on. I mean, our perch is pretty darn good, and you I mean we're right at the 50 yard line and high, and it appeared from here, and I said it. I didn't think he got it. And, you know, you got to give the officials credit. And obviously, Mike New here in this team, <laughs> they've just received a new life as their offense is back out on the field with great field position. And they have not had great field position this game. But here, 
um, really have an opportunity to drive a short field and score. A chance to make it a two score game before the fourth. Huntley searching for running room amongst the black shirts and he's inside to the 40 a gain of six. Caleb Huntley a thousand yard rusher two years ago as a freshman. First Ball State freshman to hit the millennium mark since Bernie Parmalee way back in 1987. Former Dolphin. Blint on second down. Hands it off. And Huntley stood up. So third down, and this probably is four down territory for Ball State. Did you see that heat seeking missile back in? Jeez, I mean, he just comes up and lays the hammer there from the second level. And uh, this defense is playing aggressive. They're teeing off on the run right now. And now, what's the decision to be made? What's, what's worked for the Wolfpack tonight? Bringing pressure and allowing these defensive backs in the back end to lock up mano y mano and get after these wide receivers. Fletcher, a receiving threat in the backfield. He'll block. Hall makes the catch and a first down for Ball State. Justin Hall extending his arms. He was the team's top pass catcher the last two years. Look, this is a beautiful catch. I mean, he reaches out, he goes to get it, and it's danger all in the middle of that field. I mean, there's sharks everywhere looking to bite your head off there, and not scared by it, makes an excellent catch to convert. Flea Flicker, Plitt has Hall open, he missed him. Would have been a touchdown if they connect. Whoa. Oh man, and, and, and Hall is, you know, he's, he's an army Swiss knight, a Swiss army knight. This guy, they use him everywhere. He runs the football, he catches passes. This time there, they beat the defense. No one in front. Tanner Ingle, the safety, even got fooled on the run. He comes down, bites on the run. And this is what I was saying. You see how aggressive the safeties were coming down? Someone from the top called that and said, they're being aggressive. Let's run a double move or some type of fake. Fletcher gets a block from his fullback, Rudy. And that opens up a bigger running lane, a gain of seven. Speaking of that, there's all the entire offensive staff is on the sideline. So they're relying on their graduate assistants who are in the box to make a call like that. And, and they called it right. That play was wide open. Toss to Fletcher. Rudy again trying to seal the corner, but NC State able to get in there. Brock Miller, the redshirt junior with the stop. It's third down. Yeah, I like that play. We've seen a few from them. They're at that buck spot. Peyton Wilson with a nice pass breakup this time. Brock Miller sifting down, through traffic me. to find the football here as the Cardinals are going to go for it after this excellent Brock Miller stop. Fourth and five. And a timeout by Mike New. Timeout. Two on fourth Ball down State. tonight. Ball State led 7 6 after the first quarter. And you know, that gave this sideline, it gave this team a little hope. Hey, play aggressively. You might have a chance tonight. They've gone for it twice on fourth down. It hasn't worked. But if they can come up with a touchdown on this drive, you go to the fourth quarter, you're down 10, knowing you've probably left some points on the board. Yep. And I think this is a ball game. They can score quickly, this Ball State offense. Courageous coaching. And, and I think Mike New knows at this point that he's got to have the confidence in his team, as you said. And then I also think about it, right, as a player, as they bring out the field goal unit. Um, and it appears, though, they're going to go for more points. This would still make it a... A two-score two score, game. Absolutely. Which but, I, but their kicking game's been erratic this year. Yeah, but he nailed that last one. So maybe this is the confidence he needs to get back in the groove as a place kicker. Rimler hit from 43 earlier. This is also from 43. And Rimler connects again. Mike New told us if the kicking game struggled tonight, we could see a change in kicker. Those are two big kicks here in this third quarter for Rimmler, who's from Germany. 
That's, that's as clutch as you can be when your team needs you. You're coming out here and you know, despite struggling, you've got to fight through that mental block. Or sometimes it gets in your head and you're like, ah, just, just fight through it. And, and give credit to the coaching staff for sticking with this young man because oftentimes that's the more harder decisions. Because everybody can see that he's struggling, but Mike Newman and his staff stayed with him, and that confidence has now allowed this young man to come out here and, and nail two in a row. Come on, Ball State has had some stops in this third quarter. Now, the big play in this game right now is that punt return touchdown by yes. Thayer Thomas. If not for that, now we could be looking at a seven-point game going to the fourth quarter. You're right, and then those two drives uh, to end the, the half you know, for, for uh, the Wolfpack, where McKay was sensational. Aside from that, this Ball State defense has done a pretty good job of bottling them up. Line drive kick by LaCour. Lesane from the eight. Lesane taken down as he gets across the 30. For every field goal and extra point made this season by participating universities, All State will make a contribution to that school's general scholarship fund. Thank you, All State. Matthew McKay, the redshirt sophomore, back out there for this NC State offense, taking over for Ryan Finley, a three year starter now with the Bengals. Before Finley, it was Jacoby Brissett. We had Mike Glennon and Russell Wilson for five years. Houston, taken down after a gain of about three. Penalty at the end of the play. Holding offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty, first down. So that'll come back. Skullthorpe flagged for the second time. If you're Dorn, you don't want this to happen, but this happens with an inexperienced group. This is a very young team. They're lacking senior leadership, and the ones that they do have, several of them are injured. And, and this offense is really sputtered. I mean, after those two consecutive touchdowns, it's a field goal attempt, a punt, touchdown, a, a, a punt return, and then a punt, and then turnover on downs. Amezi can't hold on. It's another long down and distance here, 10 seconds to go. They've got to find their juice again. And, and, and really, it's who's going to make that play? With the lack of leadership, and frankly, proven playmakers, who's the guy? I think the latter point is big. You lose a Remington Award winner at center, 2,000 yard receivers, 1,000 yard back. And oh, by the way, an NFL quarterback, that's Deep. tough to replace. Now, this team has had 11 players drafted in the last two years, tied with Miami for most in the ACC. McKay takes off and tripped up from behind by Albright. Huge tackle for the junior out of Georgia. Outstanding effort. Jeez. And that takes us to the end of quarter number three. Player Thomas with a big punt return touchdown for NC State. Wolfpack up two touchdowns. 15 minutes left in regulation. Third and long for NC State to begin the fourth quarter. Anish Raf, Ahmad Brooks, Chris Budden down on the sidelines. The Wolfpack with a two touchdown lead on Ball State. It's the ACC end of the MAC on this Saturday night here in Raleigh. Matthew McKay, here's the blitz. Incomplete, and NC State will have to punt in this second half. NC State has a punt return touchdown by Thayer Thomas. Offensively, it hasn't been very good. And a lot of the questions that Dave Doran had to answer a week ago, they're not going to go away unless the Wolfpack finish this game strong. Yeah, and, and that time McKay had time. He had a pocket, despite there being six-man pressure to connect on that throw. He got the route he wanted from Thomas. He was open. He had space. And he just doesn't connect. And now you're forced to punt here. Gill sends it to Riley Miller from the 19. Miller down the sideline, out of bounds, shy of the 30. Another good punt by Gill, 53 yards. Fansville College football update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Uh, so much for Michigan being back. They were thumped by Wisconsin 
Jonathan Taylor went bananas in Madison. Pittsburgh knocking off UCF. 27-game regular season win streak over for the Knights. And about it, I've got Joe Burrow right now as my Heisman favorite. I don't care about that. Are you, did you just hear what you said about Jonathan Taylor? He's got 203 rush yards. He's tearing the Big Ten up right now. Plitt finds a wide open Davis. And a first down, a gain of 17. One thing that I've noticed about Plitt is he's done an excellent job on his play. Field. He's selling it. There have been multiple times tonight where the defense has totally been duped. They've gone the other direction, and he's booted out or wowed out to that boundary, and, and he's doing a good job of that. Um, I think he's also throwing the ball well on the move. That may be something, especially with them bringing pressure, that could be of the answer for that. Plitt gets rid of it quickly. He's got Miller. Down to Chris. One of the interesting things when you watch Plitt on the sidelines is it's it's not even a raw, raw type leadership. It's a confidence. And he walks up to guys and goes, we're going to go, we're going to put up seven, let's go. Almost like a business-like attitude. Go out there, score. He entered the week having put up monster numbers. Third in the FBS and passing yards entering week four. Third in touchdown passes. Finds Hall, tiptoeing the sideline, makes a couple of defenders miss, and he's to the 32-yard line, 16 more, and Ball State with a touchdown here. Oh, would send a lot of angst into the remaining fans here at Carter Finley. Many have checked out. I like Justin Hall. I mean, he's done this all season long, too. They won. On the move, Miller is open at the 20, spins back and taken down at the 17. On the move, you know, and he's finding his top two targets. He goes to Hall, who came into this game as the second leading rusher, and Miller, uh, Riley Miller, as their most reliable target. On the move once again, as this offense is moving, has moved into the red zone, looking to move past the goal line. There's the pressure, looking for Miller, can't make the catch. Incomplete, just got a little turned around at the end. Yeah, this ball, it, this 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 ball, it's called a paintball, where they throw it at the back of the, the defensive back's head, and it's the timing of the wide receiver that really makes the play, that sells it. Because you're going downfield, and all of a sudden, you just flip those hips and catch the ball to that outside hip and shoulder. They've done a good job connecting tonight. I, I don't know why he went with one hand there. I know he's trying to pull off the Odell Beckham catch, but secure that catch and get you closer to the end zone. Hand off to Fletcher. Looking for space, finds it. And the patience by Walter Fletcher. Third down. Four to go. Ball State needs about the seven yard line. Keep your eye on Justin Hall, who's in the slot. I'll also move him in motion as well. Plitt, end zone incomplete. He wanted Hall, who was covered well, and it's fourth down. What does Mike New do now? It appears as though they're bringing out their field goal unit, but I'll tell you what, Tanner Engel on that back half of that play. I mean, listen, he's your starting free safety. They put him on the most dynamic player on the perimeter in Justin Hall, and he locked him down. I'm talking locked him down. And, um, this is a guy, keep an eye out for number 10. We haven't said his name enough tonight, but let me tell you, he's a playmaker. 29-yarder for Rimmler. And Ryan Rimmler connects his third field goal of the game. It's 27-16. Ball State continuing to chip away. That's three field goals now in the second half. Mike New made the decision to kick the field goal instead of going for it. And that has to be because he believes in this defense right now, which has held NC State without an offensive touchdown in the second half. Now, the, the, if you're playing devil's advocate here, then that means we'll go for it on fourth down because the defense has, has been playing well. I, I don't really know the theory behind that decision. So I'm, you would have gone for it. I, listen, the way that my defense is playing, the, the rhythm that the, my offense was in, I'm afraid I would have gone for it there on fourth down and really 
uh, made NC State's defense defend me there in that critical situation. Well, Shane oh. gets pounded. Oh. Got rocked. Brock Burns delivering a vicious hit. Oh, my goodness. That's what happens when you're a smaller guy and you run into the teeth. Jeez. Now that's worth an ice bath, maybe two tonight. Not lying there. Last four drives for NC State, none longer than five plays. The previous play is under further review. They're going to look at that last play. I wonder if they're looking at targeting. You can have a targeting review from upstairs back after this. The replay booth was looking for targeting. The returner is not a defenseless player in that spot. So you're looking for forcible contact with the crown of the helmet. Attack with the crown of the helmet. And from the replays that we saw, it looked like Burns did use the crown of the helmet. And the crown of the helmet is everything above the face After mask. After further review, it is determined personal foul targeting Ball State number 44. 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. Number 44, Ball State, is disqualified. If you attack with the crown of the helmet, it does not matter if the player is defenseless. And Burns will now be ejected for the remainder of this game, suspended for the first half of Ball State's next game, which is NIU on the road after a bye week. I'm not sure I agree with that. Looked like he was trying to leave with his shoulder. Person gets the call. And that's one of those difficult calls to make. As a former defender, I can tell you, I mean, there are a lot of things that should be calculated. Number one, he's three inches taller than the guy he's tackling. Let's just start there, okay? So he can't get as low as him. It's almost physically impossible, number one. And also, you have to see the intent. If you've ever hit with the crown of your helmet, you don't want to do it again. It hurts. I don't think players are doing it intentional, and, and that's where I really struggle with, with that call in particular. Five-man pressure was picked up. McKay rolling out, now running for his life. Throws it away. Uh, they don't really look at intent. It's, is it attacking with the crown of the helmet? I understand that, Anish, the letter of the law. What I'm saying is it should be revisited. I, I mean, because when, when it's confusing as a defender, and it's very, it's already difficult enough to tackle. And, and then all I'm saying is if you lead with your shoulder, you're going to lead with your the crown of your helmet in your head. That's almost impossible not to do. At an ACC officiating clinic over the summer, they wanted the defender to see the player and not just lower the head blindly. It was see the defender, see the tackle, if you will. McKay steps up. Batted down into the air. Is it intercepted by Cosby? It is. First interception thrown by McKay and Ball State. Uh, they're sensing something here with 11 and a half to go in the fourth. Wow. You talk about a ball bouncing your way, if you will. I mean, it goes off of his foot. He knocks it down. He kicks it in the air. And that, that certainly doesn't look like it was anywhere near the ground. But we talked early on about Bryce Cosby and what he means to this team. He's one of the best defenders in the MAC conference, no doubt about it. But he's savvy. He's smart. He's a playmaker, and, and I believe that they're going to try to review this, but from what we saw just now, I'm going to have to say that that's an interception. interception. The previous play is under further review. And again, the ruling on the field, Cosby caught it. We should mention, in the case of targeting, when it is reviewed, you need to confirm the call or overturn it. It can no longer stand, and this ball is kicked into the air. And watch Cosby. This angle should tell us. I think his teammate may have prevented that ball from ever hitting the ground. That was after his left leg did. <laughs> Clayton Cole. What a play. Now, did that go off Cosby's leg or the receiver's leg? I thought it went off of it Thayer Thomas's leg. Jeez. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wow. What a play. 
I tell you, if Clayton called 32 and White diving in, if he did anything. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called. First down, Ball State. When Clayton Call slides into your frame, you can't see if that ball hits the ground. <laughs> he was the screener, and if you're Ball State right now, you get a bounce like this, out of the mud is their motto. Well, they have held NC State without an offensive touchdown in the second half. The Cardinals have had three field goals in this half, and there's still plenty of time to go. Play action, Plitt in trouble. And he can't get away. Murchison and Tyler Baker Williams in the backfield. A big loss on first down. Well, I know why they went to it. They've had so much success with his play fake abilities. Uh, behind the line of scrimmage, he's really duped the defenders. This time, though, the veteran, <laughs> Murchison, I mean, just not having in of any of it, was not fooled by the fake. And now you put yourself in a bad situation you know you you gain the good field position now you move back after a big sack uh, from this Wolfpack defense Plitt with time pumps checks down completes he's got Fletcher who's been a threat out of the backfield but it's only about a yard so third and long coming up yeah they wanted a double move on the outside edge and it just wasn't there uh, well defended uh, by the Wolfpack on the back end. And now a third long situation. First and foremost, you've got to have good protection because these are later developing routes. So you need to get to the distance or you need to recognize them earlier. And it appears as though NC State is going to drop numbers back. They'll drop eight. Plitt checks down. Fletcher dropped it. And it's fourth down. The punt team will come on. What a squandered opportunity. I mean, yeah, you, you talk about just not handling your business. Wow, I mean, you get the sack, you come back, you go to your check down, and now you, you've got an opportunity to get at least a quick strike. And if I'm put there, there's no there's no pressure. I know you want to get it down to that check down, I get it, but the, the longer you wait, the further the defense is away from defending him, and you put him in a better situation. That was a squandered opportunity by the Cardinals. Disaster avoided by NC State, now the kick is blocked. Picked up by the Wolfpack. What a turn of events. Ball State got a fortuitous bounce. Uncle Mo on its side. The Wolfpack defensively get a big sack, force a three and out, and then special teams to the rescue again here in this second half. Now it was courage because they came after that punt. That was the intent of that. They weren't trying to return despite already having a, a, a punt return for a TD earlier today. They said, uh-uh, we're coming to end this ball game, make a play. And wow, I mean, yeah, now you fear this offense, you're looking at an opportunity to really close out this game if, if you do it the right way. Um, unfortunate for Ball State. They just did not do anything with that. And now, North Carolina State is in a prime position here to put this one away. Will Dabbs blocked it, and Malik Dunlap recovered it. Heck of a play. Person fighting through defenders east of the five. And I'd keep it on the ground. And I'd, I'd keep it on the ground. I'd milk this clock. And at some point, I said it earlier when they were on the opposite end in the red zone, McKay has to make this team respect his feet. And he's a good enough athlete. He scored from about this distance earlier um, headed into halftime. Make this team respect your running ability. A couple of big targets in Carter and Angeline in the game. McKay rolling out, finds Person, upended, the ball is out. And NC State able to recover. Outstanding play. Back in G, Antonio Phillips. Woo, he was moving. And he came in and then just completely swiped the legs from under the 6'1", 220-pounder. I mean, he's, he's, he's listed at, a, at 188 pounds. I mean, he's given up weight, nearly 40 pounds, and he did not care. Nice forceful tackle. Didn't wrap him up, but he ran through the legs of person. And maybe this is where this three points could, could keep them in the ball game after they went for the field goal, if they can hold them to a field goal here. Calls a timeout, 8.45 to go. 
NC State knocking on the door. ESPN College Football is presented by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. We visited the Sensory Service Center at NC State. It's been around for more than 20 years. They let you taste test. It's open to anybody. You get a gift card for taking part. We tested chocolate milk. They gave us three servings. The one in the middle was the reference, and we had to find out which of the other two was closest to the one in the middle. That was outstanding. The chocolate milk was good. Okay, he's going to run it here, and he will hop into the end zone. Special teams set that touchdown up, and special teams is the reason NC State is probably going to win this game. I, I called for it, and, and I think this is something that they need to add. This is a design run here. I mean, this is him. This is a draw. I mean, they called this up on the sideline. What about the block there coming across? Jordan Houston, I believe, running back, pulling over and just nailing the defender. That's what broke that play open. But the more McKay can do that, I think the more his game will develop. And then I think it'll also give him an opportunity, right, to grow into his role as a passer. It's a three-score game, the PAT by Dunn. And it's 34-16, NC State on top. Tonight's best performer is brought to you by AT&T. NC State special teams has been the hero. The block that set up the last touchdown, and then Bayer Thomas. This was the only other score for NC State in the second half. And if you're Ball State, listen, their season has been defined by missed opportunities. Had a chance against Indiana in week one at Lucas Oil. Just couldn't finish it. The Hoosiers ran away with it in the second half. They did beat Fordham. Last week, they outplayed FAU in a lot of ways, but four turnovers. Today, not getting touchdowns and having to settle for field goals on a few drives here in the second half. And then the interception with good field position. The very next play, a 10-yard sack. You go three and out. You have a kick blocked. And it really changed the game, and it may have ended the game. Yeah, and then the offense starting off hot and just really not being able to muster up anything. Give NC State credit. They came out and really shut them down after those early drives uh, for the Cardinals. Ohio State visits Nebraska. Primetime ABC next Saturday. Presented by Wells Fargo. Buckeyes erupted for 76 earlier today. No Urban Meyer, new quarterback, no problem. The machine continues to roll in Columbus. I've been impressed with them. That, that's not what I was expecting. That's a big, you know, I, I've played there uh, at Nebraska. It's just a wonderful venue with a lot of history. And not that Ohio State will be intimidated. They play in the horseshoe. But the reality of it is, is, you know, Scott Frost is trying to do some things with that program. I know our crew really likes him and what he's stood for over the last several years. And trying to get that program back to its prominence, that'd be a big win for him. Here's Hall making the catch and taking it across the 25-yard line. Not a lot there for Justin Hall. Seventh catch, only about a yard. And to that point, let's give NC State credit. They tackled at times like uh, an elementary group uh, up against West Virginia. But they've come back out here, and they've, they've had secure tackling. It's been technique sound like that there from Isaiah Moore. And it, the reality of it is, is, you know, this coaching staff got after him pretty good. You've got a lot of young players back in, back there, but, and they're, you know, West Virginia does a lot of things. They've, they've got eight missed tackles on the night tonight. They've really cleaned that area up, and that's been the difference uh, in the ball game defensively. After the catch by Given, Plitt with a first down completion. To the 40-yard line, Yo Hines Tyler. They like his upside. Sophomore from New Orleans gives them some size. Down at the 40. Huntley pinballs his way close to midfield, close to a first down. If you're NC State, how do you walk away from this game if they're able to hold on? Number one, I, I think they've, they've had more at first, you know, and Hassan Littles sneaking back into Wolfpack territory. The most important thing is he's come away with a win. Yeah. What you didn't want to do is come here and drop a night game here in front of your home crowd. And 
I, I don't think it's been a game that you, you go around and you beat your chest on if you're in some state, but let's face it, you know, Ball State is one of those teams that they, they're competitive and they, they'll hang with you and they'll go toe to toe and blow for blow for you. But NC State has done enough uh, tonight to really distance that gap. Three yard gain for Fletcher, Chris. Along with that, one of the questions that Doran had was, I need a guy who's going to say, not on my watch. Who's that guy going to be when three of your four captains are injured? And I've spent a long time down here on the NC State sidelines. And when things are going well, everyone is on page. Everyone's cheering. But when things don't go well and they start to get hit in the mouth, they don't have anyone. No one stepped up today to say, not on my watch. So that's a question that Dorn is still going to be looking for. Littles, meanwhile, with a great shoestring catch. And Ball State continuing to press. Another check down to Fletcher. Cuts it back. Fletcher still on his feet. And out of bounds, it'll be first and goal. Wow, nice cut. Nice job of gathering his feet coming in and out of that cut. Really just allowing the defense to, to run right by him. You've got to do that at the proper distance in order for them to miss you. And he gets back outside. This is a nice cut. So uh, this, this offense is trying to find its rhythm. This will be promising for them if they can punch it in. Fletcher. Not much. Now Ball State will go into the Mac as an approved team. They are in the middle of a stretch in which they won't play a home game in 35 days. That's brutal. Played FAU and Muncie last weekend and then at NC State tonight, a bye week at Northern Illinois and then at Eastern Michigan, a team that beat Illinois last week. We might get a timeout here. NC State was trying to substitute. Timeout. NC State. 526 to go in regulation. The Wolfpack have a comfortable lead. Ball State, though, looking to add some more points to their total. In 1947, NC State had a live Timberwolf as a mascot brought to games by students. Then they had a, a wolf costume. Cheerleaders were dressing up. 1981, Mr. and Mrs. Wolf married at halftime of the basketball game. We haven't seen the live dog mascot much tonight. Tuffy. Lit taken down, shy of the goal line, third down. Asus with the stop. I think every team that has a dog for its team nickname has to have a live mascot. Otherwise, a dock of scholarships, NCAA sanctions. <laughs> People want to see puppies and dogs. And the Tamaskin they have here is just gorgeous. Huntley finds the end zone. Flag is down. Offside defense number 52. Penalties declined. Touchdown. Ibrahim Conte jumped off sides. The touchdown stands. And now Ball State will attempt a field goal, or rather a point after, excuse me. Two-point conversion makes it a 10-point game, but you're still... Still, still two scores. Still two score games. Still need a field goal and a touchdown on a two-point conversion. Wow. Rimler puts it through. 34-23. Ah, Tuffy. I mean, wow. It's a beautiful dog. Oh, indeed. Indeed. Part shepherd, part mamelute, part husky. You used to have a, uh, a great Dane, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure did. I'm, I'm more of a big dog kind of guy. You, you seem like you may be a small dog guy. No, I got guess it right. I'm a German shepherd. Okay, all right. Respect, my friend. Chris has a, a little puppy, right? <laughs> I married into it. <laughs> I grew up with Goldens. I married into the no, rescue no. Chihuahua. <laughs> I've always thought the small dogs that, that you see people carrying around, they're more accessories than pets. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I do not have a purse for my Chihuahua. <laughs> I, I wasn't even going there. I, 
I think there's a certain size limit, right? That's all. <laughs> oh boy. Onside here to Pierce. NC State touched it. And Ball State has it. Uh, there's still a whisker of hope here for the Cardinals. Whoa. That is a big play. I mean, jeez. And these are a lot harder to field. You know, I, I was on the hands team there. And it's not like trying to field a ground. Now, Penix, who's the number three running back, often comes in on pass protection. Could not hang on. And the moment he touches it, that's a live ball. I believe it had gone 10 yards. And now, what would this offense do? You, you saw them, they got the ball almost in the same position off of interception and didn't do anything. Clint to Hall to the 44, a gain of four. Eighth catch for Justin Hall. And this defense is worn down for NC State. Three-man pressure. Clint has time. Downfield, he wants Tyler! Makes the catch! Inside the 20. A lot of fans at Carter Finley have filed out. Ball State is still checked in. Tight on Palmer is in great position. He just wanted that ball more. Plitt again looking for Tyler, and it's broken up. Palmer, this time, able to get in there. He went back to the well. Watch this catch. Phenomenal. And he jumps and catches on the back of the defensive back. And there's not much you can do there. I mean, if you're Palmer, you're in, you're in a good position. He just wanted that ball more. Using that 6'3 frame, and you said it earlier, the sophomore from New Orleans is, is, is a guy that this Ball State staff is, is high on, and you see why. Riley Miller at the bottom of your screen. Plitt over the middle. That's given. He's to the 15. Now in this situation, a field goal still makes it a, a one-score game. So if you get three, then you're probably looking at kicking it off, and then your defense, if they can get a stop, depending on how much time is left. Plitt looking for the end zone. Incomplete. That looks intercepted. And it's intercepted by Ingram off the tip. An acrobatic pick. He's had a heck of a ball game today. He's made some phenomenal plays, fantastic plays. They've locked him up on that right cornerback position. <laughs> the group of DBs, uh, they're always looking for the camera. And uh, great coverage here in order to force that pass break up by CJ Jr., J.R. Hart, pardon me, and Ingram, who's in underneath coverage, just works his way right back there, was hustling to the ball and was rewarded with an interception that took away points. Split, disappointed in that turnover. Bailey Hockman comes in at quarterback. We saw him in the first half for one drive. Handing it off to Person, who drags tacklers for a gain of 16. That Ingram interception put to have extinguished this Ball State flame. Give the Cardinals credit. Came in here, hung around for a while. Second quarter got away from them, and uh, that's been the difference in the game. Now, what do you do with McKay? I mean, after those two outstanding drives, he was one of eight for one yard, and, and, and really just was not effective. And so now you bring Hawkman out. I don't know if there will be some type of debate. Oh, there will be. Yeah. <laughs> Person bouncing to the outside and taken down for a loss. Second and long. Sports Center from LA tonight after UCLA Wazoo. Lyndon Stan will have Kirk Herb Street on to recap Saturday's action and all the implications from week four. Plus, a look back at former Wazoo Cougar Gardner Minshew's amazing week. I don't know if he had a better week or his dad Flint did. And then the Cubs, can they get back in the wild card to chase with a week left of the season? chasing the Brewers for that second wild card spot in the National League.
Minshew. I, I just want his mustache. That's all I want. I think is great. How about his dad, though? I mean, more cutaways of his dad after every play. <laughs> and to your point, though, you know, they, they were talking about making a change in the media circles around here after last week and the struggles at West Virginia. Dave Doran likes the fact Matthew McKay protects the ball, but this offense still uh, lacks that dynamic playmaker. And how serious is Donovan Knight's injury? He left the game in yeah, the first half. We have not seen him come back. We've seen a lot of Ricky Person tonight. Over 70 yards on the ground. And I do think you could, you know, as we look at the remaining schedule, I th think you could be confident in what Thomas um, has brought to the table as, uh, along with Amezi. I, I think they've, they've played that they're reliable targets. Now, you can get your, your freshman running back back, despite Jordan Houston also taking advantage of his minutes tonight. I, I think they've got some pieces. Just can they be consistent and can they stay healthy and can the chemistry be good? Yeah, Dave Dorn talked to us so much about getting the pieces to fit. And I get a little bit of the frustration around here because the last two years, it depends how you view it. Back-to-back -back nine win seasons for NC yep. State. That doesn't happen often in this program. And when you look at the history of this program, there's only been one 10 win season. That was when Phillip Rivers was the quarterback. Chuck Amato was the head coach. So you say, all right, nine wins two years in a row. That should be celebrated. But I think there's some truth to there was a little meat left on the bone when you also had 11 draft picks the last two years. And there is a sense that maybe more could have been accomplished given that uh, the ACC was down and NC State usually doesn't play a very tough non-conference schedule as Houston manages to stay on his feet. Wow. And Dave Doran doesn't care about the noise or what we say or what the media says. He was very clear about that to us. But again, in these parts, that lack of a, a marquee win. Yes, they beat Louisville when Lamar Jackson was there, but other than that, that seems to be missing, and I think that plays into the narrative around this program. And you know, for years, this has always been a program where you felt, man, as good as they are, should they be great, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I think you could have that conversation. I, I personally believe, you know, you, you saw that uh, full screen that we popped up, or the stats were one of two teams with nine wins the last season. The only other one is Clemson. I mean, ball start, offense. Number 54, five-yard penalty, first down. I mean, I, I get it. I, I understand what the debate is here, but I think sometimes you have to consider what you got. And now, even coming into this season, I mean, you, you talk about this young, inexperienced team. This is about to be a three-and-one yep. young, and inexperienced team. So what more could you get out of them at this point? I'm not sure. Houston picks up about another yard and a half. Well, that's the thing, right? You lost to West Virginia on the road. You're three and one. You're getting ready for ACC play. You go to Florida State, and if today was any indication, there may not be a big crowd at Doe Campbell. Boy. You know, when you head down there, then you've got Syracuse coming here on a Thursday night after a bye week. That's a scary game. Have to go at BC. Boston College already has that loss to Kansas. On the road at Wake and then Clemson. So you do play some of the big boys in the ACC, and maybe they're not as big as everybody thought they were, but you still play Syracuse, a 10-win team from last year. Florida State on the road is still Florida State on the road, and Ahmad Wake might have a case as the second-best team in the conference right now. Right, and especially with, with the way that uh, their quarterback is playing. And so when you have quarterback play, it makes the difference, and that is why I believe the development of Matthew McKay or whoever takes his job, whether it's Bailey Hawkman, who we see here, Whoever takes this job, there's enough talent around you where if you can find some chemistry, make good decisions, that you can put yourself as a contender. And, and I, I, I don't think, I think the ceiling for this season is certainly there. I, think I don't this see them team. winning a championship, especially with the youthfulness, but I could see a team that could turn some corners and really uh, get ahead of steam headed into the 2020 season. Yeah, I see a team that by the end of October, the beginning of November, should be a lot better, especially in offense than Agreed. it is right now. I agree. As NC State puts the ribbon and wrapping paper on this one, I would show Matthew McKay the last few drives of that first half. Absolutely. If they can bottle up that version of their quarterback going forward, you got a shot. Then you got a shot. Indeed. 
A valiant effort by Ball State. Special teams, though, came through big time for NC State in the second half as we go down to Chris. Coach, you told me earlier that you had a lot of questions about the youth on your team, how to use your pieces, what you learned today. We got a lot of work to do. I was proud of our punt block and punt return unit. I mean, that was the spark of the second half for us. We found a way to win. It wasn't pretty. Did some good things. Got a lot of work to do. You told me at halftime that you plan to use Bailey Hoffman so that you could see what he looked like, not in trash time. So what'd you learn about your quarterbacks today? Well, Matt did some good things, you know, and uh, I didn't think we played well at all on offense in the third quarter. I mean, that's not the quarterback. That was everybody. We did not play good enough to win in the third quarter. But Matt did some good things, you know. It's good that Bailey got out there now, so he has a chance to learn and grow from that. Where do you need to see the biggest growth before you open up ACC play next week? Uh, we got to cover people better. I mean, just watching the secondary right now, I mean, they're catching the ball on their knees, you know. I mean, we got to cover people better. I appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. An honest assessment for Indeed. Dave Doran, even after a win, and it's better to solve problems after a W than an L. NC State, the blackout crowd comes away with an 11 point win against Ball State. The Wolfpack hit the road and begin ACC play next weekend in Tallahassee. Ball State heads into its bye week, hoping for a resurgence in conference play in the Mid American. For Chris Budden and Ahmad Brooks, Simon A. Shroff, good night from Raleigh.